I'm still living with your ghost Lonely and dreaming of the West Coast I don't want to be your downtown I don't want to be your stupid game With my big black boots and my old suitcase I do believe I found myself a new I don't want to be the bad guy And I don't want to do your sleepwalk dance anymore I just want to see some palm trees And I will try and shake away this disease We can live beside the ocean And leave the fire behind Somehow past the break Watch the world die We can live beside the ocean And leave the fire behind Swim out past the breakers And watch the world die And I am still dreaming of your face Hungry and hollow for all the things you I don't want to be your good time And I don't want to be your fall back crutch anymore I walk right out into a brand new day And the scene and rising in my own weird way I don't want to be the bad guy And I don't want to do your sleep walk dance anymore I just want to see some sunshine and I just want to find some place to be alone we can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind so now past the breakers and watch the world die we can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind Swim out past the breakers and watch the world die. Beside the ocean and leave the fire behind. Somehow past the breakers and watch the world die. We can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind. Somehow past the breakers and watch the world die. We can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind. Somehow past the breakers. Watch the world die We can live beside the ocean And leave the fire behind So now past the break And watch the world Watch the world die Watch the world die Yeah, watch the world die
All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, fellow decoders around the world, wherever you are, welcome out to normally what's your question, but let's, oh, wait a minute, I got to turn my, hold on a sec. Okay, I'll do my audio up. Let's talk about 2024. Let's talk about 2024. And uh, those of you, I don't even know, I think Jordan's still going, <laughs> starting to get on my speed where he does hours and hours of podcasts. Um, 2024 on the Gregorian calendar. What's going on here? 2024 coming in. Uh, so big, 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 big things that I see as an observer of life. Um, I'm going to show you some of the aspects through the cards, the tarot. We're going to talk some numbers. We're going to look at your questions. 2024, I think, is going to be a doozy of a year. Um, all these signs coming out, movies, shows, preparing. People say, oh, they're mind control, or they're psyops. You can call it whatever you want. If it doesn't get you one way, it's going to get you another. That's why when people say, I don't watch TV anymore. But yeah, you're on your cell phone. Or you're on your computer. So... Why would, who cares? You're scared. You're not, you're not watching television. I don't own a television. Yeah, but you got a cell phone. It's, it's transitioned from a TV into a cell phone. Let me just get your comments popped out here. I'm kind of on a new setup, so that's why I had a little bit of difficulties. Okay. Big shout out to the moderator, Stephen and Pamela, always showing up with the wrenches. And a big shout out to all of you for supporting this great research, sharing your research. A lot of you have inspired me to do certain decodes. A lot of you are embedded in the decodes that I do. So a big shout out to you and a big thank you to all the Patreon members that have supported this research. Your pledges every month are greatly received by me greatly appreciated sending all a ton of love um i really appreciate all your donations every month i seriously do and this is why i'm able to continually pump out this research and you know some of these decodes are only going to be on patreon and i'm going to tell all of you why that is probably sometime during this segment so you can kind of get a better understanding of my mentality, where I'm going, what I'm doing, and the things to look forward to for 2024. Okay. Um, so, I do want to just start off by saying that the total eclipse, it, this popped into my head today, and lo and behold, the song that popped into my head, randomly out of nowhere, and most of you that follow this research, you know how I am about when songs pop into your head. That's a sign. It's a message for you. So just randomly today, earlier today, Total Eclipse from the Heart by Bonnie Tyler popped into my head. And, you know, it popped into my head because I was listening to Metallica's Death Magnetic album at the gym just a few hours ago. And the song called My Apocalypse came on. And that's where I got the, the words. And then it led into Total Eclipse of the Heart. And then the ridiculousness of how scripted that lady's life is. So, of course, I'm going to do a decode on it. Absolutely. Because I want to show you how that lady, who was a great singer, has, who has over 2 million subscribers on her YouTube channel, doesn't have a choice in what she does. Not the big things anyway. How she's going to be by the total eclipse of the heart. And of course, that eclipse coming up on April 8th. 
is going to be with that X marks the spot in more areas than just one. But the big one is over Texas, which is the heartland of the United States. On April 8th. <laughs> her, it's a, her birthday's on the 8th. Ju her birthday's on June 8th. Bonnie Tyler, who sang the song Total Eclipse in the Heart, her birthday was on June 8th. And the eclipse is on April 8th. And 8 is tied to the sun. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, the prison that you're in, the prison that we are all in, is the infinity symbol. It's the sine and cosine wave, and it is made up by the sun, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I can confidently tell you at this stage of the game right now, with all the research I've been doing, I mean, I've had a field day over the past week. That the God of the Bible is the sun. 1,000%, folks. There, I have, there is no little small percentage. Maybe it's like 99.9. No, 100%. I can tell you confidently, 100%. The God of the Bible, the Lord of the Bible, is the sun that shines above your head. And now if you want to go ahead and attach any title you want to attach to it, Yodei Vahe, Jesus, Lucifer, I don't care, you can call it whatever you want to call it, Ra. That's the boss. And that sun creates a sine wave. And that sine wave is directly matched to our DNA. Because the DNA is the infinity symbol. It's the infinity symbol, which is the number eight. That's why the sun makes the eight analema shape as it moves up and down the tropics. That is why 19 is the sun card in the tarot, and 19 in mathematics is the eighth prime number. That's why. It's right here on your face. There's an infinity symbol right here on your face with your eyeballs. This is the snake eyes. When you roll dice and you get snake eyes, everybody has it on their face. You're looking at it. Snake eyes, the two pupils. This causes the four seasons, the rising of the tropics up and down, yada, yada, yada. And the sun is going to do something that you've never seen before very soon. I'm confident that's going to happen. I don't know when. I'm not one to make predictions. I have made some over the past. I'm very leery about making any because people crucify you when you get them wrong. But the sun is Shiva. The sun is the pale horse. The sun is the destroyer. The secret destroyer is the sun. The word sun in Hebrew in numerology is 55. Secret destroyer is 55. 55 is tied to the number 26, which is the element iron, which matches the numerology of the Yodei Vahe. This research is getting so tight, so tight, you can't even fit a piece of paper between it. So what's next for, tw what's coming up in 2024? Well, my friend Sharon, who reads the cards, Sharon Jeffers, maybe you have her books, maybe you've gotten a reading from her. She reminded me, she texted me the other day, and she said, I haven't looked in at the cards for the years in a really long time. She's busy, she's been painting, and so she says, it just dawned on me that 2024 is the nine of spades day, this card. This is the card for 2024. The nine of swords, which is the card of the nightmare. Now, I'm not saying this to put any fear inside of you. I'm not telling you this because I'm trying to scare you. I'm just telling you what the cards say. Now, if you 
how did I get this? By the, somebody say, well, how did you get this card? Any, any calendar date, you do the rules of the cards of illumination, the, 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 playing, the playing cards. There's 52 cards in a deck. Matching the 52 weeks of the year, there are four suits. There are 13 cards per suit, 13 weeks per season. Any number that you get total, you subtract it by 52 until you get to 52 or below. So you take 20, 24, and you subtract minus 52, minus 52. You got to do it a lot of times. But when you finally get down to it, you're going to land on the number 48 to get to 52 or below. 2024 is 48. And the 48th card is the Nine of Spades, and the Nine of Spades converts into the Nine of Swords. This is card 59, which is the game of life. This is tied to 138. If you want to know what the 138 is, it's tied to this. And the, and the 138 is tied to the sun. So it's not just the Gregorian calendar that we have to look at. We also can look at the Hebrew calendar. And the Hebrew calendar, we're in the year 5,785. And you take 5,785 and you subtract 52 a whole bunch of times until you get to the number 12. It's going to reduce down to the number 12, which is going to be the Queen of Hearts. This is the card of NASA. NASA's founding date is the Queen of Hearts card. So there's going to be massive change. It seems like there's going to be massive change. And then, of course, the, the eclipse on April 8th is the King of Diamonds, the one-eyed king with the battle axe. And if you're on the Patreon, you would know Actually, I think it was on Leave the World Behind, the first one, on the public YouTube. That Apollyon, the destroyer, in Revelation 9, verses 11, is the king of diamonds. Which is tied to Lucifer, because this is card 39, and Lucifer's numerology, Halil anyway, is 39. So it, it appears that there's some massive change coming down the pike for 2024. Massive. And there's no fear here. You don't need you to go run. You don't need to get crazy. Go with your instincts. Some people say, oh, you can't be near the coast. Or you can't be here, or you got to go up high in the mountains, or you got. Twenty twenty four, folks. In my opinion, in my research opinion, is going to be a very doozy year. And that's I'm just going to leave it at that. But out the other side of that will emerge something beautiful. You know, when you study the history of natural disasters, you, you'll see that there's a lot of events that happen, especially in the 21st century. 50,000 deaths, 100,000 deaths, 20,000 deaths, there's a lot. So. When you correlate that and you do the calculations and all that stuff, it could be any year where, you know, Jason Brashear is in his Phoenix. It can be any year from now. I know he's got it pegged to 2040. I'm not going to say he's wrong, but clearly that's an opinion. There's possibilities. You look at the timelines and you start doing the numbers using the calculations that he provides with his methodology. And it can be... He says 1902 was the last Phoenix event. Well, only 29,000 people died in 1902. You go a couple of years more and there's 50,000, 100,000, much more. 
So, I just don't think that we, we should rely on a set date. I, even what I'm saying here with 20, 2024 is going to be a doozy, absolutely, because clearly the ushering in of cryptocurrency <coughs> must take place. And there needs to be the implementation of crashes with the markets and cyber attacks and all this stuff that they've been saying is going to happen. All this stuff that's not fun, right? But on out the other end of that will emerge something very beautiful. But just how long is it going to take? I, I, who, who knows? But my, my guess, my professional guess as a scientist, researcher, fan of the mystical arts using all these systems, my guess is the sun's going to do some crazy shit that you've never, we've never seen before. Could send out plasma thunderbolts. This is where you're going to get Zeus and thunderbolts. There's already this crazy weather going on. Like I've had people that live in different parts of the world and there's this, cra this crazy weather going on right now. Los Angeles, you're in LA. You got these, cr the water up is coming up on the, the coastal flooding and So what's, let's talk about 2024. Let's check out your comments. I'm going to go through. I'm staring. I got my comments right here, right in front of me. And I'm, I'm going to see um, what all of you have for questions here. Um, what, I, what I'll also tell you very confidently is that you know, and I've, I've talked about this before. This is not the first time. I've got Spit You Out, Decoded. Prison, I have my Prison Plant series. I have Prison Plant 5 coming out. Five, five mean, anytime you see the number 5, it means the sun. 5 is the sun. As is, of course, 6 as well. But 5 is the, the Pentagon. That's why you have 5 fingers and 5 toes. And 5 orifices on your face. Five. The fifth house of astrology is Leo. Leo is ruled by the sun. The Lion of Judah. First Peter 5 verses 8 says, Be vigilant because your adversary walks about like a roaring lion. First Peter 5. That's Leo. Regulus. It's the Lion of Judah. It's the sun, folks. It's the sun, it's the sun, it's the sun. It gives you life, but it'll cook you. In the, set, go out in, in the desert, it'll cook you. It gives you life, it takes life. Nevertheless, through the methodologies that I've been shown from the voice in my head, I've, I've, seen, I've continually seen the patterns now of perhaps the way out. So the way out of this reality. And I, I, I don't have the exact formula. Like what do, how, do, how do you got to think? How you got to be? How you got to act? All I will say is that I take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And crunch it down into something and then out comes, this is what it means to the way out. And it has to do with the sun. The way out. Some of you don't want to play anymore. I get it. Like, I'm not a fan of suffering. I'm, I mean, you know, like, I, I'm, I'm not the spring chicken I once was. Aches and pains or hurts. I mean, it's just going to get worse from here. No matter how positive thinking I get. It's too, you know. Like it's still it's 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 not like it's gonna get better. It's just the way it is. That's reality. So if you don't want to play the game anymore, what comes with that? What are the requisites that come with I don't want to play anymore? Well, I mean, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing and then you can kind of guesstimate of what, what it is that you want to do. Let me turn this AC on.
for me in my own personal life, I'm just going to use it as the objective. And let me, let me just start off by showing all of you this. Let me just open up my cursor. Hold on. I just want to show you some visuals because what I've, what I've found over the, over this past week has been the, the, the top, top, of course, as of course, as fate would have it, it's the, the top decodes I found. Decode, the decoding I found is the very creme de la creme of where I'm at in my research career. Like it's just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And now it's being, it's showing itself clearly now. Like there are no accidents anymore with this, like in, in real time. Okay. Um, so let me take you on this trip and show you, by the way, this is the guy who, if you want, and I'll leave this in the description of this video later on. This guy was the one who sang the song Ever uh, Santa Monica, Stephen Wilson Jr., which was an amazing. Why did I? This song picked me. It popped into my head. Why? Because it says, "Swim out and pass the breakers, and watch the world die." By 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 Everclear, and this guy was the cover of that. Okay, so these are all the decodes I have coming out. Some the majority of these are going to be on Patreon though, but. This one right here, folks. <laughs> what does this mean? Well, it's tied to the sun. I can tell you that right now. And you see this word, providence. There's only, well, there's one place in the United States of a city called Providence. And it's in Rhode Island. The smallest state in the Union. Providence, Rhode Island. Does this have any connection to the eye of Providence? The answer is 1,000% yes. Tied to the sun. And it just so happens that the latitude, longitude of Providence is exactly the same as my birth city. Because I live just north of Providence. Or I'm born, Connecticut. Really, really close to Providence. Providence... In numerology, when you type in the word providence, we're talking about God now, right? Providence is 46, just like the word whoop, government. So now you can see, now I know this is like, oh, that's just numerology. That's okay, cool. You got a connection there. No, I'm going to show you more to show you that what's running the government is the eye of providence, which is why you see people doing this symbol. This is created by the sun. This is Lucy in the sky with diamonds because all you have to do is make another tetrahedron right here. And now you have an octahedron, which is the diamond. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. You're going you're gonna to have the Vesica Pisces here. I'm going to show this all. I have a very big decode coming out on the, uh, I don't think I even pulled it up. Yep, this one right here. This will only be on my Patreon. I'm not putting this out in public. And what I'm going to show is that all of the concepts fit flat round globe convex concave they all fit they are all true in the model of the earth i will be showing that that's why i'm going to alleviate the burden of people thinking it's got to be this way it's got to be that way and I'll just give you a very truth, a big, big, big truth bomb right now. Earth is an eye. So it mirrors your eyeball. So now you know the shape of the earth. And listen, you don't have to believe me. But go ahead and do your own research. Earth is a mirror to your eyeball. That is my final answer. Okay, and I'm going to show you how the sun, because the sun is the boss here, and I'm going to show you how it works 
and why the square encompasses it, and why masonry is not evil. It can be, I guess, if you want to call it that, but it has nothing to do with evilness unless you say so. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to support it. I, I didn't even think I was going to do this. I'm going to support this. I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to debate anybody. I'm not here to say, oh, this is the only way. I'm going to show you how all ways fit. But my final answer is earth is an eye. That's why it's like this. So forget about, oh, it's flat. Well, th that fits right into it because look at, look at the, the iris of your eye. Look at the cornea. The cornea is the firmament and the pupil is the center of the earth. And I'm going to be showing this. I'm going to support it just like I do all my other decodes. And there will be no doubt about it anymore. There will be anybody say, no, that doesn't work. Okay, well, then you're going to have to prove it wrong. So I'm going to show you how it does work with the mathematics, with sine and cosine wave, et cetera, et cetera. This. That's what's coming up in 2024 for me. This. This is going to be a big, big truth bomb. Big, big, big. Big. Okay. I also have this one coming out. I didn't think I was going to do another one. But of course, 5 is the sun. The word 5 equals 20. And the, word tw uh, the, the number 20 is tied to uh, the judgment card, which is right above the number 19. Five. Five fingers, five toes. Got this one coming out. But So these two are, are, are going to be some of the biggest reveals that you've ever seen if you've been following this research. Okay. I have this one coming out as well on Patreon. You want to know what the Schumann resonance is? I'm going to show you. Why is it that why does it have the number 7.83? Well, the 83 is tied to I am. That's that's a little hint. 83 through mathematics through the golden ratio, which is the measurement of nature, is the number 83. And that's on the back end of the decimal, 7.83. Okay? And what's the seven all about? So we're, we're going to be getting into that. And of course, then this one, right? And, and this is the way out. The way out, right? And, you know, I found this. Somebody was saying, oh, the Bible was written and altered by man. And I'm like, well, man's not in control of their mind. So they're just an instrument. And this is what led me to this. Right? This right here. I got this coming out. Another, another, what does this mean? What does this symbol mean? You think it just means the okay sign? Nope. This means time. This means being a human being. This means stuck in time. We'll be talking about this as well with the number 14 decoded. Another big one, you know, and of course I'm, yeah, inspired by Jason Bashir's because he, he was talking about it. The Phoenix, the Seven Seals. I'm going to show you the mathematics in the Bible, how it's tied to the pale horse. It will be absolutely undeniable. The scriptures and verses of the Bibles, I'm going to show you, that it'll blow your mind. Completely blow your mind. And then I got some biblical alchemy coming. I, this is probably going to be a series. Um, I'm going to start off with Genesis and Revelation, the first and last book. The 1 and 66. Okay, so I got, I got, this is going to be a series. Uh, I have this coming out. The Son of God. You could spell some of these words out on the periodic table. Another one is, I am God. Oh, if you want to go look up, go, go, do the, go, over, go do the numbers on that. Iodine, Americium, and Gadolinium. The Son of God. I have this coming out. Okay, another, another big one. And I got for fun, I'm going to show you how this was absolutely scripted into our reality. And the guy who committed the murders, he said, oh, it's voices in my head. Yeah, of course. Just like there's voices in your head. Not every, see, folks, if you had to go murder somebody and you didn't like, oh, there's voices in my head, that would be like a really bad hell to live out. Think about it. If you were a serial killer, you're always looking over your shoulder. You're living in fight or flight. Your, your, nervous, your, your, your nervous system is shot. Like that would be a hell to me. So I got this one coming out as well. All right. Whoop. Okay. So those are, those are, the, uh, those are the, the upcoming. I have more too. I have, 
I have Jesus Christ, another Jesus Christ decoded as well. Um, and I have a few more that I, that I didn't put up there. But I have hundreds of slides that I created over the past week. That's what I was doing here in Colombia. And why, why am I getting all these downloads? Why am I getting all these downloads? Because Colombia has the same latitude, longitude, number-wise, as my birth city. 4171. 4171 is my latitude, longitude. The numbers of Lucifer are 741, according to Manly P. Hall. Why? Because Lucifer is the sun. I'm going to show that in the Masonic Flat Earth Decode. You will be absolute, there will be no doubt about it anymore. Zero, zero doubt. Because a lot of people say, oh, Lucifer is Venus. Okay. I, don't, I mean, are you just regurgitating that from what they tell you in the books? Or are you going to be able to support that? Because, yeah, there's plenty of morning stars out there. But what is, what the, does light bringer, does that, light bringer or the bearer of light, does that sound more like it's linked to Venus? Or does it sound like it's more linked to the sun? I'm going to show you why the square and compass is tied to the sun. And there will be no doubt about it. Zero. I'm very confident in that. I'm not trying to boast. I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That's it. Okay? That's, 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 all, that's all, I'm, all I'm saying here. And then I'm going to leave it up to you as the observer to make the determination on what it is that you want to believe. But I can tell you 1,000% with absolute certainty that the yod heh is the sun. And you know, I, I, I got turned on by this verse today and I had never even looked at it. I had never even looked at it in this way. And it goes to the book of Exodus. And the book of Exodus has the Ten Commandments in it, right? And Exodus 20, verses 13, thou shalt not kill. And I got a decode coming out. I'm gonna have, I have a decode coming out on thou shalt not kill. Exodus 20, verses 13. But then, just a few chapters later, in Exodus 32, verses 27... God orders Moses and his army to pick up their swords and go murder 3,000 people. Doesn't make any sense. It's a complete in-your-face contradiction. I would, and people, and it, I know that people, religious people will justify this. And the question I would ask them is, if God told you to go kill somebody and pick up your sword, would you do it? I guarantee 100% of them would say, hell no, I wouldn't. Because I'm supposed to be about love. Oh, and they'll say, oh, it was different back then. What was different? It's so ridiculous now. It's like, like why didn't I ever read this, research this? Like, I've been reading the Bible since I was a young kid. <laughs> never, never kind of correlated the two together. It's like right in your face. Oh, all right. I mean, folks, if you're not convinced that the God of the Bible is the Son, go read Psalms 84, verses 11, where it says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The shield meaning the moon. It says it right in Psalms 84. And Psalms 84, so you, so you can't just rely on the interpretation of the Scripture. You've got to be a decoder, and you've got to correlate it to the periodic table and the cards to get the picture. 84, Psalms 84 is tied to the sun through the element Krypton. Krypton is the 36th element. It has a weight of 84. 
And then you go to the next element, rubidium, the 37th element, and that has a weight of 84, and you see I in the sky equals 37, which is the sun. That's why the burning bush, it was fire. That's why. Because it has to do with the sun. Uh, Jason, you're asking about the, the zodiac signs going in reverse order. That's how I have it pegged. Um, I mean, some people had said, I have some people say, oh, no, we're moving to Aries. Does it feel like Aries? I mean, yeah, there's war, but compare Aries back to back when they were really doing wars. Just doesn't make sense. The electrical age of Aquarius makes more sense. And, and seemingly that lines up with the Dwarpa, uh, Yuga, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, P Polaris is in there too. Polaris, the pole star. Polaris definitely has a very big say in all this as well. I totally agree. But I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, folks, with 1,000% with conviction, Jesus is the sun. The sun that shines above your head. The one that walks on water. The one that light, is the light of the world. See, if you do the numerology, you can't just say, well, the pastor told me this, or this is the way it says it in the book. Yeah, but the book has numbers to attached to the letters. Because everything can be measured in numbers. Everything. That's why you use mathematical equations to figure out how far you went. You say, oh, I went one mile. How many miles? One. That's one. It's a measurement of one. Everything's numbers. So when you take the spoken word, when you take the verses and the chapters and the books and you do the numerology of them, the truth starts to emerge. Another truth starts to emerge. And when you use the Greek scriptures and you talk about Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. When you co correlate add that into the original Greek language and you put it into the Greek numerology cipher using the original language, the total you're going to get is 88. And 88 on the periodic table is radium, which is Ra, which is the sun god. So you, you, when, when you start to see all these things come crashing down and you can start to see that, that, that there's really no doubt about it. 2024... Since we're talking about the upcoming year coming in, and there's many, I think there's many New Years. This is the winter solstice New Year. And then you got the New Year coming up in the springtime, during the spring equinox, when the sun is right directly overhead of the equator, which means that each tropic gets an even amount of light and, and darkness. And there's two of those, the spring and fall equinox. That forms the sine wave. The sun is the regulator, the pendulum that swings back and forth. That's what it does. If you just pay attention, you'll see the sun setting in a different space in the wintertime versus the summertime because it goes back and forth. It's the serpent. It's the sidewinder. The sun is the serpent. The serpent makes the sine wave. You're going to see a lot of truth being revealed in 2024 like you've never seen before. And there's going to be a lot of you that are going to get really pissed off. Some of you are not going to want to accept some of these things that you're going to see. You're going to want to hold on. And the only reason why you'll hold on, for two main reasons. Number one, you don't want to be wrong. I get that. Nobody does. And number two, you still live in fear that you don't think you got it right. Well, if I, go, if I abandon that which I've given 50 years of my life, 50 years of service I've given to this religion... And now, well, I can't, I can't just leave it, let it go. I got 50 years invested. I get it. I get it. So you know what? You're not going to want to abandon it. So you're going to stick with the sinking boat. The boat these boats are going to start sinking. You're going to start to see the rod 
um, the rawness emerge. That's, that's what's, that's what's going to happen. By gum. Yeah, Jordan Maxwell was great. I'm a huge fan of his work. Big inspiration. I mean, he talked, he even talked about it. <laughs> the light of the world, Jesus is the sun. You know, the again, you, you when you when you take the word and you convert it to numerology to get it into numbers, it, it gives you a different meaning. And then you attach something else to it to strengthen the numbers. Versus the interpretation. Like, you got an interpretation, you may get somebody say, agree with you. Oh yeah, well a hundred people will agree with the interpretation. Okay, but that's an opinion that you say, yeah, I believe that. But then what about the numbers and the code behind it? What about the rawness of that? See, you're believing in the final product, which is the interpretation. Behind the interpretation are letters, numbers, and symbols that measure the final product that you believe in. I want to, I'm, I'm somebody myself, and I'm a lot of you here, you want what's behind the final product. Well, let's take the word sun, for example. The word sun in Hebrew, shemes, shemesh. I think I pronounced it right. The numerology of sun is 55. 55 in Hebrew numerology is tied to the word sun. And the 26th element on the periodic table, which matches the numerology of the yod heh vah -Heh, is 55.93. I mean, are you just going to say, oh, no, that can't, that's not right. The, the Bavarian Illuminati. The Bavarian Illuminati, Adam Weisskopf, they formed on May 1st. 17 whatever then it's the five of spades card the five five is the sun so it converts into the five of swords this is card number 55 right here this is card number 55 tied to illumination what does that mean what like what is, well it's, you know what this is also tied to cryptocurrency Cryptocurrency is tied right to this card right here. Because the sun is about to go into the cryptocurrency world. The sun represents gold and gold represents currency. And it's very possible if you go study Revelation, it says in Revelation that the sun will be darkened. It will go out and there will be no more light. And if the sun is the head honcho for money and it goes out, what does that tell you? Leviticus 7 verses 19 they'll be throwing their silver and their gold will have no worth huh. this is a playbook the Bible is a, it's just one playbook you go study the, 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 the Bhagavad Gita and it will be Krishna Krishna will tell you you got to learn the three illusions you got to learn what Maya is Krishna says that Krishna is the center point of this uh, concept, these concepts. Krishna has the same numerology as the sun card, 19. Krishna, starting with a K. The element on the periodic table, the 19th element on the periodic table, potassium, which has a, the letter K on it, because it's called kalium in Latin. See, people don't look at this kind of stuff. I get it. You, you look at the stories, the stories are good enough. Oh, the story's good enough. Oh, no, you got to be, Jesus has got to, the only Savior, Jesus has got to be the Savior. What if you're born in India? Then there's no, there's no mention of Jesus in your household. Are you wrong? Well, the people that say, yeah, they're wrong. They didn't have a choice, so how can they be wrong? There's a lot of things that are going to come out in 2024 that didn't come out in 2023. And I would say a lot of that, the reveal is, a lot of the truths that, and even, my, even myself, like, I don't have it all figured out, folks. I'm to tell you straight up. Like, I'm still, like, in the dark in some of this stuff. Like, I don't have all the answers. I don't. I've gotten things, when you want to say wrong, just missing the mark, many times. I don't have all the answers. But I got over 500 videos. And that's what I use as my support 
versus someone saying, no, it's, this is what it says in the book. Or this is what somebody told me. The patterns are just too dominant. And so I'm decoding the Bhagavad Gita. It's tied to the sun. It's tied to the sun, folks. Nothing new under the sun, as they say. Here comes the sun, the beetles. Christ is within the crystal soil, brain activation. Absolutely, we're, I believe we're all, I've been saying this, many of you have been saying it, we're all Jesus. Because the sun wants to come play the game that it creates, that it illuminates. In order to do that, it has to become an avatar, it has to become physical matter. Now you get spirit into matter. Spirit into matter. And now you're playing the game. Now you're a Christ figure. And your cross that you carry is your screenplay. Pretty simple. That's what I think. So 2024, folks, I mean, like I said, this is, you know, like not to, not to scare anybody, but this is, the, this is the card that's attached to 2024. So, you know, like, and then what I was shown as well, and I got really, I kind of got really emotional with this. This is kind of what I felt. It's like, Imagine that you're the sun. I, I guess I'll try to do my best to kind of narrate this for you. Imagine that you're the sun. And you're shining down over earth and you do it religiously day in and day out. And you give unconditionally. You shine no matter what. And you're on a clock and you go back and forth on the trial. You do that year in and year out. Century after century. And you're always looking down watching and maybe playing at the same time. Well now, the end of the game, the end of the movie is coming. And you as the sun, you're looking down over your little, you know, your little terranium. And you're, you're, you're looking at all how it's like, it's a little dirty over here, it's corruptness over here, but then there's beauty over here. This is still blossoming. That looks amazing. But you're, the, the earth's a little sick. M you know, Mother, Mother Earth, the black sun, is a little sick. It's got a little corru corruption over here. This stuff's going on. Stuff shouldn't be going on. Right? So the movie, which is Earth, is coming to an end. But the end is just the beginning. But as the sun looks down and it realizes... It's getting to the end of the cycle. And when I, when I got home from this thought, as I'm thinking, I'm actually I was sitting in the park, feeding the pigeons, sitting in the sun at like 1.30 in the afternoon. And this is what I would like, this is what I was interpreting here. Like the sun is sad. If the sun was a person, it's sad. Because it knows it has to wipe the board clean and there's going to be uh, collateral damage. It knows that. So like this is the card that I pulled when I got home. Of course, the, this is the five of cups. This is what the representation of what the sun is, was trying to interpret through my mind. It's sad. Think about the last time you lost your dog or your cat that you had for a long time, a pet, or a husband or wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, brother, sister, mother, father, and you lost them. How did it feel? Well, magnify that times, you know, the sun being the boss, the logos, 
looking down over its creation and it's got to it's got to wipe it out because it's the end of the cycle it's sad that's why i got emotional with it because i i kind of felt that the sun being sad that it has to it's time it's time for the cycle how however that looks and it was this this five of cups and this is and, this, and when I pulled this, I was like, "Wow!" Because it's the five, the five, which is the V, and the V is one half of the the diamond. The the V is the right. It's right in there. The A and the V are right in there. The V is the twenty second letter in the English. There's twenty two letters in the Hebrew alphabet. The V, and the mirror of the V is the A. And that's 122. 22 and 1 is 23. And 23 is called the royal star of the lion in numerology, which is the sun. 23 is 5. 5 is the house of Leo. Leo is the sun, ruled by the sun. It's sad, folks. Like, the logos that runs this reality is going to be sad because it has to wipe things out. And it doesn't want to. It doesn't want the ending. Think about you watch your favorite series. On, on the telly, on your program. On, I know, not you. You don't, watch, you don't watch TV. I know, not you. But those of you that watch your shows, and you're really into the show, and you're coming to the end, and you're on your last episode, the last episode, and that's it. And you don't know if there's another season coming out. You kind of get, you know, you know like it's, it's an end, man. That's why the Leave the World Behind, they showed the last episode of Friends at the end. Which just so happened to come out on May 6th, which is 56, which is tied to the Phoenix, because 56 is barium, and barium has a weight of 138. 56 is tied to the sun, it's tied to the movie, it's tied to Shiva the Destroyer. Fire and brimstone, sun. So the ending is just the beginning, but it has to happen. And you can imagine that the creator, however that looks, is, is sad because the ending is coming. Like it has to end things. Yeah, so I mean, if this if this 2024 is the beginning, like if it's if it's this year, 2024, or 2025. I mean, keep in mind, I didn't even mention that 2024 is the year of the freaking dragon in the Chinese. So right before that total eclipse in, in on April 8th, you have the Chinese calendar moving into the year of the dragon, and what is the dragon? The sun. It's all lined up. All of it. The Hebrew calendar, the Queen of Hearts moving into the King of Hearts, the King of the Sun. It's all moving into the Sun, folks. All of it. The lineup is crazy for 2024. Frank says the fire, yeah, the fire dragon, yeah, and it's the, it's, uh, is it the fire dragon? I know we have the fire horse coming up in 2026. Someone can look that up. I don't want to. My my keyboard is under my computer, and I'm not in my main main setup. So, but ladies and gentlemen, all this stuff that I'm talking about, all this like doom and gloom stuff, we need to make lemonade out of that. We're going to start looking at it in a different light. Like you're beginning to start to see how, the, how this construct works, which is maybe one of the reasons why it gets reset because you have the Tower of Babel story. They got too close to the truth. Reset. So in my opinion, you know, like the Egyptian Book of the Dead has a great verse in it. 
which talks about in order to ascend, your heart has to be as light as a feather. Talked about this last, what's your question? What is, how do you get your heart light as a feather? Non-attachment. You can't be going out there hammering people and swearing and de defaming and putting people down. And if they don't believe in what you believe or if they do certain actions that you don't agree with and you're just hammering them, hammering them, hammering them, that's not having a light heart. That's not having a, a, a heart light as a feather. Your heart is so heavy and dark when you're doing that kind of behavior. In my book, that is surely going to, if there is such a thing, of getting reincarnated back in this reality, that's a sure guarantee. That is just my opinion. See, I'm trying to be light as a feather. Me. And that's what I live through. I'm trying to check the things off the box, not because I'm scared of doing that. I'm not doing these things because I'm living in fear. I'm doing them because they, the, they feel right. First, it started with me being a minimalist. I became very light in my possessions. Moved to Mexico, bet well back and forth. I, have, I got two suitcases and my electronical equipment, which I could walk away from if I had to. Would I be sad about it? Maybe, maybe a little bit, but I'm at this point now, I'm realizing that if you need to walk away <coughs> and not look back, you got to be okay with that. So having your heart light as a feather is, I think, is one of the requisites to reach that state in nirvana. And so, like, you know, like, a lot of people ask me about certain people on the world stage that are, you know, that have been doing the work, doing research, you know, and I, I, and I'm friends with some of the people that I don't agree with some of their behavior. I don't resonate with it at all. I would never want to behave that way. Even like I've gotten people, I see people, I get, you don't even believe the comments. You, well, you can imagine the comments I get persecution wise, the comments that get hidden, I have to actually Hit a, hit a box to see the comments because they're that dirty. People coming at me, oh, you're friends with Jason or your friend. How could you? And this is, it's like, really? That's what you're coming to me for? Now is not the time to be sitting there assuming you think you know somebody. Now is not the time to look at somebody and think you assume you know exactly how their life is and what's going on and what they did and how it worked out. It's not the time to do that. Now's the time to evaluate your own life and how you can make yourself a better human being. And if you don't resonate with certain people, don't hang out with them. It's all about fine-tuning 2024. Whether or not the shit, a shitstorm comes, whether or not we actually live through this Nine of Swords. Because many, you know, 52 years ago, there, 1972, there was a Nine of Swords year. Right around when the, gold, the, the Nixon shock happened. Nine of Swords. Right? So I'm not saying it's going to be a massive, uh, there's going to be destruction. And maybe it'll happen in 2040. Maybe Jason Bashir's is right. Maybe it will happen on that, on that day, on that year. But, folks, we, you can feel it. Now is not the time to be debating. Now is not the time to be defaming. Now is not the time to be persecuting people. Now is not the time to be unloving. Now is not the time to, you know, to, to hammer people. Now is not the time to be a, living a life of assumption. You think you, oh, I, I, you think you know. Now is the time to know yourself. Now is the time to focus on you. To raise your frequency, raise your frequency. You want to raise your chrism. You gotta be light as a, in my opinion, you gotta be light as a feather. You can't be blaming. You you can't be pointing fingers at the because folks, what happened these past couple of years? That's the pale horse. It's tied right to the pale horse. Absolutely. 
but it's changed now. So it's about it. right now. I'm all about refinement, refinement, refine. How can I refine my life? How can I refine my life? How can I refine my life? What can I do? How can I do better? How can I do better? Part of it for me is detachment, 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 detachment. And if I don't resonate with somebody's behavior, I'm not going to sit there and assume like, hey man, people got shit going on in their lives. We have no idea. You have no idea. They may be in pain. They may be suffering. I don't resonate with some of this behavior, but I have no idea what's going on in their life. I wouldn't want to be there. It makes me grateful for my life. So I always make lemon. I look at this and I'm like, I, w I wouldn't want to be that. That's, that. that's like hell. Some, some people that I see, they're living through some really hellish behavior. They're projecting really hellish behavior. And I'm like, I'm so grateful I'm not in that space. That's not a fun space to be in. It makes me great. I'm actually, I flip it. I make lemonade. I, I, I get to be grateful that I'm, that I'm not in that space. And you should too. You should at least consider that. Somebody will always have it worse off than you. Somebody will always have it better than you. Yeah, Scott says, now is the time to forgive. Absolutely. Tie up your loose ends. Forgive people. You haven't talked to somebody and you've got to bury the hatchet. Go bury the hatchet. Even if they're in the wrong, even if you think, oh, they're in the wrong, they dupe me. Okay, great. These are reminders. You could, the energy, like even if nothing happens in 2024, people are gonna look back and say, oh, look, that Logan, he was full of shit. That's, that's what I'll get. I, I will get persecution because the things that I said may possibly happen, I, people will be that negative about life. They hate their life that much that that's what they'll focus on. Oh, Logan got it wrong. What an idiot. What a, what a, what a shill. Well, he's an a People think I'm an agent. <laughs> People think I'm an agent working for some organization to screw you over. <laughs> they have nothing better to do. You These people making videos, putting people down. They take the time to actually create the video. I get it. Like, they, they, like, they're doing their job, right? I wouldn't want to have that job. What a terrible job that must have. That's hell to me. So 2024, folks, is a lot of letting go. Being light as a feather. That's what I feel 2024 is all about, no matter what's coming down the pike. And if you just go live a life of, like, ignorance a little bit, like... I would definitely say, like, I'm going to live a life more of, like, innocence, ignorance. Because I, I, like, I ain't running. I'm not running. Like, I am where I'm at. I'm, I, right, right now, I'm in Colombia. And at the end of January, I go back to Mexico. And that's where I'm at. I'm by, I'm by the ocean. Some people say, oh, you don't want to be by the ocean. Hey, man, if, I pat, if, if, if the shit storm comes and it's my time to go, I'll just close my eyes and let it come. I don't have an underground bunker. I don't have a, a six-month supply of food and water. I ain't got any of that. That's just, that's just I'm okay with that. So from here on out, I'm just going to be continue to do decoding, be service to others, give, 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 try to make, you know, help people become better individuals. That's it. And I'm not looking for a reward. I'm not looking for a trophy. I'm not, this is not like, I'm not trying to get bonus points. I'm not trying to win anything over. I'm just being me. I'm, I'm doing what makes me feel good. Like I am, I personally am a guy who chases he the hedonistic lifestyle i am i am that guy who wants the pleasure principle not in the orgasms and sex and all that stuff no i'm talking about like i want to have peace in my life like i just over this past somebody had asked a question like what i did over christmas i was in cartagena 
Colombia. I was with family. And I got to go inside this amazing city. It was called the Walled City in Cartagena. If you ever get a chance to go to Cartagena, folks, it is absolutely magnificent. I never would have in a million years thought of how amazing the city is. And it, you know, it's called the Walled City. And inside there is where all the royalty lived. You couldn't get in there if you weren't royalty. Like high end. And now the place is just so spectacular. And the historicity of it and the history. And of course I'm looking at the, 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 uh, the buildings and I'm asking how old they are. They're, they're way older than, than 1902, way, way past Phoenix events, way older than that. Survive. But anyway, when I was in the walled city, and I'm not even a feeler, I'm, I'm more of a thinker. But in the walled city, I'm walking around the walled city, and I could see how it was a community. And it was simple, and they, had, they have a, a theater there. They had a couple massive churches and there was like people's houses there. And it was just this, you know, it was just its own community. And I was getting the sense of how it was just simple there. How it would be like to be there. It was just really amazing. Are we going back to that? Are we going back to horse and buggy? Some people have asked me that personally. Like I've gotten emails. What do you think? You think we're going back to the horse and buggy? Who knows? Time will tell. I don't have an answer on that. But I can't see how all this technology that's been created being completely wiped out when the people that are creating it are at the highest levels possible. And you would think they know a thing or two about a thing or two. And then you correlate that to the age of Aquarius if you're a fan of astrology. And what does that mean? What is that age? And then you go study the book of Revelation. If you want to bring theology into it, and you can see how it's talking about the age of Aquarius. Luke 22, verses 10. Follow me into a house with a man bearing a pitcher of water. That's Jesus. Jesus coming in the Piscean age saying, my kingdom is no part of this world. Then he talks about following him to the house of Aquarius. Hello, ding, ding, ding. Pretty easy to see what that story is talking about. So, 2024, folks, massive change of course i feel maybe something simple for you maybe not a massive change maybe nothing will happen in your life maybe all of us are creating our own timelines and if you you're like man nothing's gonna happen maybe nothing will happen because that's the timeline you're on and you take everybody with you on your timeline that is possible TJ's mentioned, TJ, you mentioned the vision of Daniel. Yeah, I broke that down too. The vision, I did my best. I've done it twice. And the vision of Daniel, the last two verses, 44, that's 244. And 244 is Plutonium, Pluto. Shiva, the destroyer. Samarium. Samuel. Daniel 244 talking about the stone that breaks all other kingdoms. Is it an accident that Jesus, Jesus is 24 in numerology in the original Greek and the word stone equals 24? It's the sun. The sun, the sun, the sun. Plasma. Lightning. And whatever happens after it's done doing its decimation, if that's what's coming down the pike. I say if, I don't know. But again, you correlate that to all the underground bunkers that have been, that have been unless they're all just a facade, unless it's all just bullshit stories and there ain't none of that happening, there is no deep underground military base, none of that, that stuff's all BS, well then maybe it's just all a story. But if that has any merit, well then why are these being created? Why are they, et cetera, et cetera. Like, it's some, like that's what would protect you from something coming from above. So what's with the nine? Okay, so the U, the U channel. What's with the nine of swords? This. This is 2024. How is it 2024? Well, you got to do the. You got to do some math mathematics. So you got to take. There, are, you got to use the cards of illumination. The, look, I got the Joker at the bottom. 
Any number that you get, you got to subtract it by 52. That's how many deck, how many cards are in a deck. 2024, 20, and you subtract 52 until you get to 52 or below. And you got to do that. Let me just tell you. You got to do it 38 times. You got to do it 38 times. 2024 20, minus 52, 38 times. And that will give you the number 48 because in the cards of illumination, the methodology for this system is you must get 52 or below. So you can take any number you want and you subtract 52 until you get 52 or below. And 2024 20, is going to give you the number 48. And the 48 is tied to the 59th card, which is the Nine of Swords which means nightmare, stress, worry, anxiety. Uh, Lizzie, is, is there no true reality but only perception? Well, it's both. Because your perception creates the reality. So we can, we can talk, like let's take simulation. Are we, what, is it, what does it mean to live in a simulation? It means you're living in a reality. Simu a, when you run a simulation, somebody takes a computer... <coughs> <clears throat> if you're in risk management, if you're in that uh, career, risk management, and you're trying to insure somebody, you run their whole life through a computer based upon parameters of what their lifestyle is all about, what they eat, how much they drink, what they do for a living, and it spits out scenarios to give you an idea of how much the insurance is going to cost. Risk management. That's a simulation. You're plugging in all these coordinates to figure out what the cost of the insurance is going to be based upon the habitual lifestyle this person has. That's a simulation. So if we take that same situation and we, we look at it from the perspective of imagine you're God and you have all this stuff going on down here below on earth and you're running all these scenarios in your computer to get it to a certain outcome. Because that's what, it's, that's what a simulation means. You want to, you're looking to get to a certain outcome. What would happen if you had this certain outcome? The percentages. They do this in the military. Like, okay, if we launch missiles and, you know, like what's, what is, what are the, what's their response going to be? War games. Remember that movie with Matthew Broderick? Simulations. They run simulations to figure out the percentage of what outcome is going to happen. You don't think that's happening from the supernatural perspective? That's what it means to be in a simulation. That's why life is predestined. If you're not on board that, I totally get it. I could take anybody here, any of you, and I can decode your life and I can show you your predestination. Anybody here. That's how confident I am. No, I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I'm not, I'm not like, oh, Logan. Th no. That's how confident I am in the script that I can see, that I've been shown. You live in a predestined, scripted reality. It was already written before you got here. You're just along for the ride. Your life, you're a star in the movie. I've been trying to show this and teach it. Big shout out to Jordan at Waters Above. He's been doing it with his courses, trying to tell you. Man, forget all the nonsense. Forget all the static, man. What do you want to do with your life? Forget about the end of the world. Forget about leave the world behind. Forget about all this, the sun burning out. Like, yeah, that's like, if you're interested in talking about that stuff, absolutely, I am. That's what I study. But at the end of the day, what do you really want to do with your life? And if you don't know, if you, some of you don't know, like I've done so many readings to people, and the reason why they come to me for the reading is because they don't know what they want to do. And after the reading, they know. Because you need to get nudged. Sometimes when somebody tells you a little bit about yourself, 
that's enough for you to move into the direction you want to move into, to get the courage. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, the owner's manual of your life is all the source code behind the final product of your life. Your numerology, your name numerology, your total numbers that are outcome in your address, your, the hospital you were born in, the latitude, longitude, your astrological charts, Vedic, uh, tropical, Chinese, Mayan, Enneagram, human design, personality types, color types, as many things as you can get your hand on, you would be well served to do that because that's your owner's manual. That tells you you're the rawness of who you are and why you're here. It's a guide. It's not the be-all, be end-all. Moving into 2024, what are you going to do differently than you did in 2023? Are you going to be focused on the static on the world stage? Or maybe this is the year where you're going to be like, sayonara. I am not tuning into politics anymore. Some of you here still watch politics. I'm not here to judge you on that. I just wouldn't want your life because, I mean, when, I wouldn't want to be, like when I want, tune into, personally, when I tune into politics, I know it's a movie. I know it's orchestrated. I know it's all scripted. People say, oh, sports are scripted. Well, how about when you come to the realization that your entire reality is scripted? The entire world is rigged. The entire reality is scripted. When you start to see that, it's a whole different ballgame. So it doesn't matter what happened 100 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. It doesn't matter if history repeats itself. All that matters is, are you happy? And are you doing what you want to do? That's really all that thing that matters. Or are you miserable because you're waiting for something else to happen so then you can make your move? Are you that person who reacts to the action? Or are you somebody who acts and creates a reaction? There's a big difference. See, I'm somebody who wants to be an action-oriented person. And then whatever I do, there's a reaction based upon it. Versus somebody who looks at what's going on, looks at the action, and then waits for the action to dictate so it can react. Like they make their move, I'm going to make my move. No, I'm just going to make my moves. I used to do that. Not anymore. It's been a long time. I'm just going to be someone who's action-oriented, and how, what I'm basing my actions on is my code. Who I am, why I'm here, what my purpose is. What makes me happy? What gets me out of bed out of, uh, uh, tomorrow? What, get, what makes me get out of bed every day? What makes me put on my, what makes me grateful? These are all high frequency activities. But not when you tune into what's going on on the TV, because you know what's going on there? Or forget about the TV, because I know some of you, I don't watch TV, but you got a cell phone, same thing. What happens when you tune in to the politics and the mainstream and what's going on? Not only do you feed it, and you strengthen it, but some of you react to it. And the reaction that you give is something that is not going to give you pleasure. So maybe this 2024 is for you to be an action-oriented based person along with your children along with your partner, being action-oriented, figuring out your code, and, and turning off the static, turning off the bullshit, all that nonsense, turning it off, not letting it influence you. And just go have fun in life. And live a life of the child again. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Living the life of that fool. Like being this card right here, the Six of Cups. Be going back to being a child again. Because, you see, ladies and gentlemen, when the sun wants to come down here and play the game, it wants to be a fool. It becomes a fool.
and find my full card. There it is. When the sun... When the sun looks down upon Earth and said, hey, I'm, that, that, that game looks pretty amazing. I'm going to go play that game. It, it, it essentially becomes an avatar, the fool. And this is zero, which is the joker, and 22. And of course, how many letters are there in the Hebrew alphabet? 22. 22 is tau. 22 converts into the letter V in the English. V is the number five in Roman numerals, and the fifth house of astrology is Leo the lion, which is ruled by the sun. Six of Clubs is a uh, Alex. The Six of Clubs is one of as a messenger. It's it's the nineteenth card in the in the. Uh, cards of illumination. It's tied right to the sun. Six of clubs. Uh, I, I haven't seen the music video Riptide uh, Kill. Jason, good call, man. Uh, the V is found on Lucifer's sigil. Yep. Let me let me show all of you uh, another big bomb. I mean, I'm trying to keep this as talk about 2024, but we're kind of getting into the typical routine of what's your question. I'm going to show you the masculine, feminine properties of the sun. From, from what I found. And I'll, I'll be backing that up. Maybe, maybe I will slide in a sneak peek of the, 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 the Masonic Flat Earth. But right here, these two cards represent the sun and its personality. And these are the two oracles. You have a feminine oracle on the left with the high priestess. And you have the masculine oracle on the right with the hermit. And this is going to give you 29. 2 and 9. Why are these tied to the sun? Because number 1, the element helium is tied to helios, which is tied to Jesus. Because they both have the same 24 in numerology. But it's tied to the high priestess. So the feminine part of the sun is the oracle, the high priestess. The masculine part of the sun is the hermit. Why? Because the number nine is the sin wave. And the word sin, which is the sine wave... In numerology equals the number nine. It not only equals the number nine, but it equals the number 153. S-I-N is the one, five, and three, which is the fish. And the fish bladder is tied to the sun. And I will, I will support it and support it and support it in this upcoming Flat Earth Decoding. I will support it like you've never seen it. I, I've never seen it support. Like, again, I ain't taking credit for this, folks. I was shown this by the voice in my head. You can chalk it up to God, supernatural, whatever's in my head. That's what's showing me this information. And yeah, the pyramids, the Great Pyramid of Giza, latitude 29 degrees north. You think that has something to do with it? What I just showed you, the 29. Why the 29? 
All right, I guess I'll show you guys a, a sneak peek on something that's pretty big. Uh, let me let me find it here. Give me one second. Uh, I don't have it open. Do, do, do. Give me one second, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so let me start here. So this is gonna be coming off my uh, flat earth. But you see, the, the, e the solstices and the equinoxes are the biggest truth bombs and March 20th is the most common solar equinox when the sun is directly over the equator, which separates the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. March 20th. Okay, it's the 79th day of the year. That's gold, ladies and gentlemen. The sun. Okay, the sun card is the 19th. 67 is the 19th prime number, and the 67th card in the tarot is the Three of Pentacles, which converts into the Three of Diamonds. And the Three of Diamonds is card number 29. Now, you want to see the humdinger of all humdingers? I'm going to use nature now. I ain't going to be showing you an opinion. Nature. Right here. This, if you go watch my superstar, I have three of them. Some of the most important information on all 500 videos I have, Superstar 1, 2, and 3, this right here is the pattern of the sun and where it rises on the horizon every month. So this is a photograph taken of the sun rising every month from December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and then you got to add another one. That's when you get 13 to complete that boomerang well, what do you think this is, folks? You know what this is? This is called RNA, ribonucleic acid. And if you go research ribonucleic acid, fits right over there, folks. You see it? You can't miss it. Right there. Not my opinion. Right there. Ribonucleic acid reduces down to a 29 which is the three of diamonds card. Ribonucleic acid is the messenger to deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay? RNA, ribo, ri, ri, ra, the sun, is the one that is going to be contributing to all this stuff. Genetics, regulation, gene expression, which converts into DNA and creates another spiral. Ribonucleic acid is tied to the sun. It's, you can't miss it. This is nature now tied to biology, tied to numerology, tied to the cards to get the picture. And now you have in the tarot, the Three of Pentacles, which is called the Apprentice. Well, what do you think you are when you come down here to become an avatar? You become an apprentice. The Three is the Trinity. The Three is the diamagnetic pulse of light and the transverse electromagnetic wave, which is DNA, and the deoxyribonucleic acid. That's what this stuff means, folks right there this is tied to the sun this is the serpent this is the devil 
deoxyribonucleic acid is tied to D, D mun, to desire, the sun becoming. Starts off with ri, ra, and then it goes to D, deoxyribonucleic. And that's going to give it a different outcome. But look at all the slides I have. How many slides I got here? I got over 100 slides with this. 100. I'm bringing out the heavy artillery. Heavy. Because it's time. Because, like, I just, like, I brought, like I said, some of this stuff I brought out years ago. Just forgot about it. But they go back and I'm like, damn, a little premature, but it's matured. Go watch the superstars decoded, one, two, and three. The sun is the boomerang. It's the W. It's the McDonald's arch. The M, the arch, that's the sun. The letter S is the sine wave, the sin wave, the serpent wave, which is going to give you the number nine. But the big, big bomb that I will be revealing is it's tied to Lucifer 1,000%. Not Venus. No. It's not tied to Venus. Venus has a role in it, of course, because that's tied to humping and procreation. Having sex and lusting and all that stuff. Yes. So... When you look at RNA, it's ribonucleic acid, and then deoxyribonucleic acid. So you have deoxyribo, and when you look at those words and you do the numerology of those before you put nucleic acid behind them, you'll have another layer to take a look at. And when you find the correlations to that, you can start to see how it all fits into the formation of the final product we call the human being, the sun, the electromagnetism, the dielectric, all of that. And it's so beautiful. And like I said, folks, the God of the Bible is the sun. If you don't want to believe me, totally fine. That's, I, that's totally fine. Lucifer is 28. But it's, the, the, just so you know, folks, in this methodology, like the numbers and the cards and alchemy, there's not just one single card element number that's attached to these titles that we give these energies or deities or whatever you want to call them. It, there's not just like, it's just that one. No. Manly P. Hall says, in his secret teachings of all ages, Lucifer's numbers are seven, four, and one. Right? That's what, it, that's what he says. No, it's not just that. There's way more than that. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you how the, the two of diamonds fits in there. Um, hang on. Uh, I can't, there it is. These two cards right here, these represent the sun. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. The diamonds are the pentacles. And the two of diamonds is the two of pentacles. That's the card on the left. 
And the card of the right is the Ace of Pentacles, which is the Ace of Diamonds. So the Ace of Pentacles, see the gift there? This is the beginning of the, the wave. The gift. This is card 65. Son of the morning. In Hebrew is 65. Huh. That's Lucifer. The sun is giving the gift. It's the sun saying, hey, follow me. And then what chases, what follows the ace? The two. And now this is the transverse electromagnetic wave chasing after the pulse of light, the photon. The ace and the two. And you're going to get this. This is when you're going to get the diamond shape from. And there are two of those. When you study the Vesica Pisces, there's going to be a diamond right in the middle. It's all found in the cards. It's all found in mathematics. Sine and cosine wave, trigonometry, square roots, golden ratio, pi, pi the whole nine. You got, you got as many, I want as many tools as I can. Not just, well, the pastor told me it's this. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. You're just going to regurgitate that? You're just going to believe him? Yeah, Lucy. Lucy is Lucifer, which is the sun. Lucy equals 13. The word soul equals 13. Another word for the sun. And it's the death card. Why? Because the sun gives you life and death. The word death is 19 in numerology. The 19th card in the tarot is the sun card. What do you think Shiva is? The destroyer. The pale horse. Sun, 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 sun. The life giver, the life taker. Go stand out in the desert in the middle of summertime. See what happens. You'll, you'll shrivel up real quick. It'll kill you. You die from heat stroke. The sun evaporates. The sun it takes. It gives, but it takes. Alternating current, which is what Tesla was known for. Is it, I mean, Nikolai Tesla, born on June 10th. He's got the Ace of Diamonds card as his birth card. The word currency equals 27. The Ace of Diamonds is 27. I mean, scripted reality to the hill, man. That guy was born to do that. I got a decode coming out on him. His childhood home, the address, ridiculous. Scripted. Scripted, scripted, scripted. I just came out with Terrence McKenna. If you're on my Facebook and my Patreon, I just decoded Terrence McKenna and I just used astrology, his astrological map. How, how what a beautiful life the guy had. Died of brain cancer. I showed exactly in his astrological chart he was going to die of brain cancer. You can see it in the chart. It's in the chart. He was doing what he loved. He was doing what he was told to do. And he ended up dying because of his script. And there was no way around it. And that's what, that's what some of you for 2024 are going to find out. You're going to find out your script. You're going to have a, the most eye-awakening moment. And then you're not going to really care too much about their script. Because your script is much more glorious. Again, you don't get to be a star in their movie, ladies and gentlemen. You just don't get to be a... Unless you actually work for the CIA or you work for the government or you work for the police department. Maybe if you like to do that. I always, I always, I, I said so many times, I think working for the CIA would be a pretty badass job. But I got a lot of Scorpio energy in my life. So, of course, a lot, if, you're, if you have a lot of Scorpio energy in your chart, then you probably like crime and drama. You probably like turning on Chicago PD. It's one of the show I'm watching right now. Why do, why do we gravitate towards certain shows that are on these networks? It's because of your code. You can't help it.
I, I think that I think Jason, you're asking a question about 2024 and the equinoxes and the phases of the moon. I, th I think this, you know, like I said, I mean, randomly today, I had total eclipse from the heart by Bonnie Riot pop into my head, and it started from Metallica's Death Magnetic album, Apocalypse. I was listening to that, and then in that song talks about the eclipse. And then after that, after I was done listening to that, then totally the clips from the heart. And as a matter of fact, I was sitting there right before I went on to, to tune into Jordan's podcast. I posted it in the chat group. And it's the heart of Texas, total eclipse of the heart. And the song and how scripted Bonnie Riot's life is, it's just, it's insane. It's undeni undeniable that we live in a pre undeniable final answer. Final answer. So just going to have fun with it. So then getting mad and doom and gloom. and So this total eclipse coming up on April 8th. I got to do the astrological map. I've already looked at the astrological map for 2024, but I'm going to take a second look. As I decode total eclipse from the heart, the song, the release date of the song. Insane. Had two release dates. The cards, just, it's, it's laughable. It's laughable at this point. It's so laughable now. David Copperfield said he's going to make the moon disappear in February 2024. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's just <laughs> uh, tuning into something that he knows um, from astronomy. I mean, this eclipse coming up in... 2024, it will be 20 more years before another one pops up. 2044 is the next one. So is something big going to happen during that time? Time will tell. I'm not going to say for sure that there will be. But I just, you know, again, why did it pop into my head today? You know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I got I to gotta be honest. Like, I'm just going to be honest because I'm giving you what has been given to me. And, you know, it's... Sadness, nightmares, stress, anxiety, destruction. I mean, if I had to, if you're like, how's it look for 2024? Not good. Doesn't look good. But that doesn't mean that it's not going to look bad. It doesn't mean that there's not going to be any good happening in life. And it doesn't mean I'm right. So don't hold me to this. I'm just giving you what's been downloading into my life through my decoding and the research that I've been doing. I'm just telling you what, what I've been shown. I don't have timelines. I have ideas and possibilities. Oh yes, thank you, Stephen. April 8th is the King of Diamonds. So the total eclipse in 2024 on April 8th is the King of Diamonds. That's card number 39, which just so happens to be the card tied to leave the world behind. And it's tied to the word Apollyon, which is the destroyer in the New Testament. Hmm. Because Apollyon is 39. What does that mean? We'll find out. Yeah, California's good. Like, you got to have all this coastal, like, weather advisories. And what else can I tell all of you that I found? I have, I have exorcism coming out. Oh, boy, what a big one this one's going to be. <laughs> Ex 
exorcism. Is that what every one of us is, are going to get? An exorcism. Exorcism equals the number 30. Exorcism is 30 in numerology, just like the word demiurge, Jehovah, 30, Santa Claus. Here's the 30th card in the tarot, exorcism. If you know what this card means, and you tie it to the word exorcism, and you get some ideas in your head, you have more keys to the kingdom. Exorcism. It's a joke to me. It's so ridiculously funny. Yeah, King of Diamonds is also the other card tied to Lucifer because Lucifer in Hebrew numerology, the original Hebrew is 39. A lot of your comments coming in. Thanks, everybody, for being here tonight. Uh, I was going to do this tomorrow. I was going to do a New Year's. Because, like, I've been asked, like, what are you doing, Logan? Decoding. Huh. That's what I'll be doing tomorrow night. Typical normal head to the gym tomorrow before it closes. Get some exercise in. Maybe go feed the pigeons, sit in the park, and then decode. I got presentations to do. I got, I got people that want information, that are hungry for the knowledge. And, I, and that's my job, my responsibility. And I love doing it. It's not even a job, my work, research. That's what I'll be doing for uh, January 31st. Decoding. With a chance of enlightenment, as I like to say. Yeah, Jupiter's in Aries. I mean, this is exactly where um, Jupiter was when the formation of the Society of Jesus happened in September 27, 1540. Jupiter was in Aries. Coincidence? Nope. Saturn was right there because Society of Jesus, their astrological map, clearly says that they're the militants that defend the church. That's what their job is. You don't have to like their job. I mean, everything's on the table now, like everything and anything's on the table. I, any idea, anything that you've been introduced to, it's on the table, meaning that it could possibly happen or it will not happen. We're at that stage of the game now, the end of the, the movie, where there's a cry. And I, this is where I feel like the man, the reason, like a lot of people say, oh, do a decode on the Mandela effect. Well, I'll, I'll give you the skinny on it, my opinion. Why is the Mandela effect happening? Because you're getting the crossover between these ages. Well, that's, that's what I think. And when that happens, stuff goes haywire. Stuff changes. Because the game's going to change. Scott Smith says, are, are, are the gods of the Old and New Testament the same? Yes. 
same. There, there's no difference. Why, why would there be? See, the Bible is very simple. The Old Testament is representing chaos. The New Testament represents order. That's why Jesus came on the scene in the New Testament. Because he came on to save you from the chaos that you were born into for the way out. I think that story has been butchered, but chaos and order is the Old and New Testament. There's a reason why there's 66 books. Because Jesus' latitude, longitude, when you add it up, it equals 66. Coincidence? No. The word Bethlehem in Hebrew is going to give you the number 22, which is tied to the sun. 22 is the master builder, the master carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. I mean, I don't know how many more times I need to show people this, these concepts before you can really... Christmas, Easter, sun worship, sun worship, sun worship, sun worship. What more do we need to see? A resur resurrection, the rising of the Christ, the rising. The, so you have the sun, the rising of the sun, and then the, 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 the so below, you have, and then you have the, the rising of the chrism, like Santos did a great job on the rising of the chrism oil, right? Going back up. However that works. So it's an interesting concept. See, when you give in to your desires, desire is tied to demon. Deoxyribonucleic. It's tied to man. It's tied to life. I'm a fan of life. You're a fan of life. I'm a humanist. You're a humanist, right? You love humans. You like you like to the the the, the, the utopia anyway. But when it gets corrupt and dark and it's it's the mo the movie's about to change hands. And emerge um, out emerges a new story. Maybe even a new son. And I I've, I've I've said it, I'm not the only person to say it. The sun could go out. The sun's on a timer, it may burn out. It may go supernova. And then a new and then there's darkness for a while. And then out pops the, the center of the earth, a new sun. A new sun is born. Or maybe that second sun that's been shown by countless people, maybe that one comes in to replace the sun that burns out. Maybe the sun is the devil. And that thing gets burned out. And it goes down into the abyss. Just like it says in the New Testament. These, these are allegorical concepts. They're, they're not real. Con they're allegorical and they're cos it's cosmology. It's just so it's like it's it's so ridiculous how all of us here I'm sure I, I, I'm sure there's some people out there in this audience that maybe you could be an exception but if you were born into I, I was born into as a Jehovah's Witness right and it was like anti this anti that oh no paganism paganism but then now I find out that yod hey vah is the freaking sun which is paganism what a like smack in the face <laughs> and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's neither good nor bad. It's just the way it is. And then you have the, you know, like in the Bhagavad Gita. If you read, I hope all of you here have at least read some of the chapters in the Gita. Another story told in a different way. Beautiful. Krishna. The Savior, tied to the Son. But in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, I don't, I'm not going to quote it exactly, but it says that if you, Krishna is saying, don't be following the celestial gods. That's what it says. So it puts this twist on the story. Follow me, the Son, Krishna. Don't follow the celestial gods which would maybe be the archons, right? But there's so many components to this. 
they make your head spin. That's why when you go down the hole, you realize that everything's possible. Whereas if you just stay on the surface, like, you know, when I was a kid, man, I was ignorant. I didn't know any of this stuff. Ignorance is bliss, yeah. Once you go down that hole of the underworld to figure out the hidden mysteries of life and the conspiracies and the letters, numbers, and symbols that run the code, then you realize everything exists down here. Everything's possible down here. Then you kind of just throw your hands up. Because then you really have a big question mark on your forehead. You just don't know. Like we have ideas, right? Like I've been shown, I've been confidently telling like the sun, the sun, the sun, the God of the body, the sun. Yeah, yes. Standard decisions at this point. But many possibilities with that. Because then you have mythologies, you have Zeus, and you bring in the mythologies, the celestials, and now you, you're talking about the largest celestial in the canopy, and it has the great red spot on it, which looks like the all-seeing eye. And then there's stories about Zeus birthing Helios, which is the sun that's above our heads. So there is this story of the sun, the logos that is the life giver of our reality that grows plants we eat and grows everything we eat it. And then there is what, what created that. Because some people say, oh, that's not God. That's not, the cre that's not the ultimate creator. Okay, great. So if the sun is just the logos of this reality and what created what created that you can't just uh, say oh at jupiter screw that no <coughs> you have to take it into consideration because you can get a telescope you can put it up into the canopy and you'll see jupiter you can see it now some people say oh no those are all projections okay great how are you to prove that well here's the answer you can't You can't. So everything has merit once you go down that hole. And you take them into consideration. Yeah, the planets are named out. It was it's it's Roman second and then greek first and then whatever before that which you have the sumerians and you know the sumerians if you study that historicity they lived in the land of ur which starts with the letter u and r ur which just so happens to be the first two letters of uranus and their god was anu which was the sky god And then you correlate that through mathematics and it being a prime number tied to 37, the eye in the sky is 37, you, you, lead, you get led to Uranus, heaven. And Uranus, of course, through the lens of NASA, it's the eighth planet. I know, so I say, oh, NASA's full of shit. Is everything they put out full of shit? Or is there some things in there that are really factual? You have to be the determination on that. I mean, Jupiter's the fifth planet from the sun. Think about that. In the Torah, there are five books. The word Torah equals 19 in numerology. In the Hebrew, it's 53, which matches the word Yeshua. Yeshua is 53. Torah is 53. 53 is the number eight. Eight's tied to the sun, which is the sine wave, which is tied to the 19, because 19 is the eighth prime number. Hold on, I gotta change this music. Hold on a sec, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know why that didn't. Okay. I mean, you know, ladies and gentlemen, just I want you to take into consideration the sun and how much significance it has on this reality. If you celebrated Christmas, you just celebrated 
the sun. I know that you have it tied to Saturnalia, and that's because it's tied to the Tropic of Capricorn, but consider the fact that the sun is the birth of the Christ, the, re the, the, the whole resurrection and it, it dripping, dropping down and then coming back up again. The ecliptic. Cosmology. It's a pagan. It's a pagan thing. Pagan. What? A, pagan is like such a. It's like a such negative word. What does pagan mean? Nature. That's it. Paganism is worshiping nature. Not a bad thing, since it's the boss. Christmas, sun worship. Christmas, sun worship. New Year's, winter solstice, sun worship. Spring equinox, the sun, again, Easter, sun worship. Thanksgiving, fall time, sun worship. How many more times we got to keep doing this before it's so obvious? The sun for the equinoxes is directly overhead of the, of the equator, which means that if you take the equator and you have the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, wherever you live, Australia, New Zealand, North Americas, Europe, whatever, in the middle is that imaginary line, the equator. And when the sun is March 20th, when it's in the spring equinox, it's directly over the head of that imaginary equator line. Which means that when it does its sidewinder like this, like a serpent, when, it's, when it sets and rises like a pendulum, that's what the sun does. It's the dragon wave. It gives equal light to the, the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. During the, around March 20th, March 21st, March 22nd, equal light. And then when it moves to summertime, June, July, and the sun veers and it moves upwards towards the Tropic of Cancer, it becomes wintertime because the sun is now farther away from the Tropic of Capricorn. This is the basics. And now the sun is on the line above the equator. It's on this line now. And it goes from this line to 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 this line. It does a zigzag motion. It's the serpent, the dragon. The sign, it makes up the sine wave, the sin wave. It's so easy. And the, the fall and the springtime, which is most of the shit shows happen during the fall time for people in the North Americas in Tropic of Cancer, it's normally... Uh, in the September, October region. And that's because it's the, the fall. The sun is over the fall. It's over the, the equator. September 22nd, September 23rd. Let's tie it. That, folks, that's tied right to the eye of providence. This. When, people, when you see people do this, this means the sun. That's what it means. When they do this, sun, the diamond, the tetrahedron, the octahedron, the patterns of the sun. Spirit is 19. The word spirit in numerology is 19. Just like the word soul is 19. Just like the sun card is the 19th card in the tarot. The word battery equals 19. Adam and Eve, the numerology of Adam and Eve, when you reduce it all the way down to the single digits, is going to give you 1 and 9, 19 or 91. The word Eden is 19. The Garden of Eden. The Garden is 20. That's duality. The Garden of Eden. Eden is the sun. See, folks, let's use, some, let's use some logic and critical thinking here. Okay, you ready for this? Let's use some real logic and critical thinking. Using theology now. Story in Genesis. So the, Adam and Eve are frolicking around the garden. And they're naked. 
They're not even aware they're naked. They're oblivious. And then one day Eve decides to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which she's not supposed to do. And she gets Adam to eat it as well. And now they hide because they realize they're naked. And then the whole story goes that God figures out, oh, you guys weren't supposed to eat from the tree of knowledge. Get the hell out of here. And where does he send them to? He kicks them out of the Garden of Eden and he, he protects that with the cherubim, the flaming swords. Well, folks, when did he create the world that he sent Adam and Eve into? You see, did he create it right at that moment when they bit the apple and they sinned? Or logically, it was already created because it was inevitable they were going to eat the fruit and he kicked them out and it was already created. So it was predestined. Kicked them out of the Garden of Eden. Get out of here. So, is it, if, if the garden is here in this reality, that means earth is Eden. It's the garden. And if you kicked them out, that means you already created it before you kicked them out of it. Which means the land already existed. Meaning that the, the, the head honcho God, the chief, knew. And he had a land created for these people before because he knew that they were going to bite the apple and, and, and take the tree of knowledge. Think, use logic and critical thinking. It was already created before. You just didn't instantly do your magic wand. It took you six days to create earth. And then the story goes just like that. Oh, you're, hey, you're out of here. Get the hell out of here. And you kick them out. Where did you kick them out to? Something you already created. What did you create it for? See, these are the things I never asked when I was a kid. And this is the story now. I'm not saying this is actual, real, factual things. There's no way to prove it. I don't even know how you would get all the different ethnic backgrounds. Chinese, like... All these ethnic backgrounds offer two human beings. I just don't even know how that would even freaking be possible. But I'm just going off of the story that so many people buy into day in and day out. And I bought into it. Never questioned it. Never even thought of these ideas. Why are we thinking of them right now? Why are we decoding and seeing the, the, the letters, numbers, and symbols behind everything now at this stage of the game? Because we're supposed to. You're supposed to figure it out at the end of the game. I mean, folks, I just showed you. Let me show you again. I just showed you this is the patterns of the sun. Okay? This is the sun. Comes up every, this is once a month, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, all the way. And it creates the serpent wave. And this is called ribonucleic acid, which fits right over the top of that. And what's in the word ribonucleic acid? How about rib? And Adam was put to sleep and he took the rib of Adam and made Eve. It's right in the damn word. Rib. Right from this. You see how it all fits, folks, in the story? It's all there if you want to look at it. Where we, you, you're, 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 the veil's been lifted. And now you're seeing it. The veil's been lifted. It's just so interesting when you start to look at all these scripts and you realize that the majority of them are allegorical. But even if we say, well, the story really happened. Okay, great. Cool. Let's go with that. 
I'm going to decode it and I'm going to show you a predestined script that I would take to a court of law, I would take to uh, a court of law and I would be able to show as my evidence versus someone coming up there and saying, well, the book says this and that's my interpretation. Yeah, but I got all this, I got mounds of evidence of letters, numbers, and symbols and showing the patterns of predestination over and over and over and over. That, that would be, that's my evidence. And, that, and we're beginning to see all this kind of stuff because you're be, becoming aware that you live inside of a construct, a predestined script. And the game may be changing and the devil, which could be inside your head, like the mind control coming from the supernatural, that may be done away with. Like that reigns over. And the veil is going to be lifted. That's why someone mentioned free guy. Maybe they were alluding to the fact that the voice in your head will be eliminated. The parasite. The parasitos. Which I decoded. Par Go watch my parasite. Decoded parasitos. Tied right to the God of the Bible. Right to it. Parasitos. What is the, go, the definition of parasite? It needs a host. You're the host. It's just so, it's so obvious. This reality, man, it's all based on desire, which makes you a little devil. I, except for you, I know. You're the only one that makes you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Desire is your demon. Deoxyribonucleic acid is the devil. Human beings are the beast. And it's the sun becoming. It's just, it's amazing because, yeah, there's all these veils being lifted. What, what is 2024 going to hold for us uh, with the lifting of the veil? What are we going to see as a group, as a community, as, you know, a truther, as somebody who, and, and I, I want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to say this is a possibility, maybe a possibility for you, but my final answer is that your truth, that your truth, what you believe, what you see, what you're being told is the only truth that matters. But it doesn't mean it is cookie cutter. It does not mean it is meant for everybody. I mean, I can't even tell you how many emails I have gotten over the years of people coming to me claiming they have the answers, claiming that they have the Savior, claiming that God spoke to them or whatever. And I don't say they're wrong. I would never say that. But I would, but I would tell them, like, I got a hundred other people that say the same thing. What do you want to do with this? If you really feel like you're going to go save the world, then go do it. Don't be a talker. Put it into action. Like I took, like Decode Your Reality, I never planned on doing this channel. I didn't plan on doing this. It chose me. I didn't choose it. The day that I opened this account was Ace of Diamonds Day, which is tied to currency. I didn't choose this path. It chose me. It was already written for me. But I love it because I'm supposed to be doing it and I'm in line with what I'm supposed to be doing. This is my truth. It's not for everybody. You see, there's not one path. There's not just one way. There's not just one road. Whatever you're hearing in your voices in your head, go with that. If you completely flat out re rebuke everything I'm saying and you completely don't believe what I'm saying, then go do what you got to do. It's totally cool.
This is how we alleviate arguing. I'm not like debating. It's a waste of time. It's not even fun to debate. It's boring. It's low frequency. It's boring. It's nonsensical. And it has no value. The only value you'll get out of debating is you get to be right. That's it. Great. 2024, I hope all of you, everybody's right. That is the, one of the biggest revelations I've ever had in my life. Realizing that everybody living is right. Do you know what kind of a game changer that is for the entire construct of our reality? If everybody was on board with that, we wouldn't need to debate. We wouldn't need to argue. There would be no division. That's not the way this world's set up. The world's set up, it wants chaos. And then it's going to give you the order. You'll see the chaos come into your life. It'll start poking at you. Are you sure? Poke, poke, poke. Someone will come at you. Like I, like I said, I've had people, they tell me, oh, I, I'm this, I'm that. And then I don't, I don't give them the time of day. Like, I'm not trying to be mean. Like, email is my least favorite way to communicate. My, I hate it. Because I got to sit there and type. That's why I make videos. People say, why don't you write a book? The average person read one book a year. Videos, everybody, want, everybody likes to watch videos. And plus, I like it better. I, I don't, like, I... If you think you're going to go save the world in 2024, then go do it. Talk is cheap. Go build a channel and go build your offense. You don't need to defend it. Just go build it. But a lot of people, they just want to go in and they want to, and they, they, they're designed, their frequency at their level of consciousness, they're designed to poke at you. What are you talking about? What are the poke, 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 poke. And then you can call that a test. Poke, 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 poke. What's going to change for you in 2024? When you get poked, you'll be like, dude, what's the poke all about? Like, I'm not interested. Moonbug says it's a way out of this matrix. Yeah, I, I believe so too. I believe so too. Speaking of that, I'll show you. I have... Um, let see if I can find it here. Take you on a little journey here. So I got this deco coming out, right? This is big. It's pretty big right here. And um, as I already showed, government is 46. What what runs the government? You would say, oh, man's doing that. Okay. Why is it called the Eye of Providence? All right, 46. I can take that 46, I can go into the string of the golden ratio, pop that in there, and you'll see that it's at digit number 70 and 71. That's gonna give you 141, which is gonna be one of the ways of pi, or 71 and 72 if you include the one point. That's gonna give you 143, which is pi. Well, then you go to this state right here, or this city, 
Providence, Rhode Island. See the latitude longitude right there? What's the number? 71. 46 is 70 and 71. Providence, whoops, the word Providence is 46. You see? So this is the methodology that I use, 41 and 71. And what is the numbers 4, 1, and 7, 1? Lucifer. Right, right there. So when you have the 741 there, yeah, I know it's the 741, and then I get the the latitudes 41 and 71. What do you see there, folks? And you have Providence being tied to the number 46. What do you think's running the What do you think's running the government? It ain't man. It's the eye of providence. Why do you think they put the eye of providence on the back of the dollar bill? In God we trust. That's going to be tied to Zeus, Jupiter as well. We can't leave out Zeus, uh, Zeus, the fifty, the cinquenta. It's interesting shit, man. When you just go beyond the spoken word and ideas. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, yeah, I decoded Manly P. Hall. When I, if you, if you want to see, how, like Manly P. Hall wrote a book called "Secret Teachings of All Ages," which equals 100 in numerology. That's tied to Sirius, by the way. You can't leave out Sirius. See, let me take you on this journey here. When you look at this word serious, it's going to be 16. Okay? Now, Jesus said, I am the root and offspring of David. Huh. And then you go to mathematics and you look at this, and 53 is the 16th prime number. And then we just go to. Yeshua. Okay. Right here. Copy and paste this. For Yeshua. Well, that's not the right spelling of it. Hold on. Ah. Just giving me 58 now? Huh, it's giving me 58 now. That's interesting. Oh, that's Joshua. Okay, hold on. Let's do it here. We'll use chat GPT. Let's see what he spits out. There it is. So we just see we can confirm. There's Yeshua. There's the spelling of it. So we're going to plop that in. So there's actually a couple spellings of this, but there's the 53. All right, for Yeshua. And since 53 is the 16th prime number, and Jesus said that he's the offspring of David, which is serious, 
Do you think that it's possible that Sirius, which is the binary star of our sun, and Jesus is our sun, the Logos, this is what it's saying? And the 16th card in the tarot, I don't know how my tarot card, this is, this is the tower card. Is there any truth to that? Maybe. I just think it's really interesting. Sirius, being the mighty star it is, right? being in that binary system, so it says through the astronomy and in the story. Don't know if that's true. David, in, uh, if you do the Greek now, if you do the Greek numerology of David, it's going to give you 41, which is tied to the eye of providence. So, Jesus saying, I'm the offspring of David. Well, when he comes and incarnates as a dude, and he's a real man, and I am the offspring of David, and David being the son, well then, it's the eye of providence. David in Greek numerology is 41. And the latitude north of Providence, Rhode Island, is 41. That's how silly this is. How ridiculously scripted this reality is. It's so ridiculous. It's pretty awesome. All right, I think we're going to end this. I'm not going to go too long because I'm hungry and um, I didn't want to go too long tonight. So I really appreciate, I just wanted to say to all of you, you know, like from the bottom of my heart, man, 2023 was through the Gregorian calendar coming up on 2024. 2023 was an amazing year for, for me personally, for, as a community, as a collective. We really went from, I don't know how many subscribers we got. I'm not for the numbers, but the more, num more subscribers we get, the more we reach and the more we can perhaps create. I'm, I'm looking to create an environment of neutrality. Your truth. When you realize your truth is the only truth that matters and you don't got to defend it, all you got to do is just go put it out there. And that's it. That, that neutrality, your heart becomes light as a feather. When you start, when you stop hanging out with the people that are like so angry and so violent, it's not light as a feather. My job is to get you light as a feather. My job is to get you to make lemonade out of life. Not everybody incarnates to be the good guy. And there's just not one path. Like this nonsensical BS about, oh, there's just one path. I'm not buying it. What kind of food do I eat for dinner? Well, I went back to being an omnivore. I went through the whole, if I can be really honest and authentic with all of you. Now I went on this, I went on the whole uh, vegan thing for many years. I, I did all that. Um, and I'm not doing that anymore. I haven't been doing that for some time now, but I still am like the base of my food is Plants. I mean, I, I drink a lot of watermelon juice. I do about three liters a day, like a, pretty much a whole watermelon every day. And then I do a lot of, I still do salads, edamames. I, I mean, I still do vegetables. When I'm in, when I'm back in Mexico here, I'm at an Airbnb in Colombia, so I don't have all the stuff I normally would have, like my Instant Pot. I don't get to make all the stuff I get to make, but, um, but I'm an omnivore. And boy, have I gotten kickback from people saying, oh, you got to be this way.
Go study nature. And you, you know, like when you study nature, everything gets eaten. And that's not to justify me being who I am. I'm not, I don't need to justify. I'm not going to justify it. I just own it. So um, my food is never the same. I, I, um, I'm a very simple eater. Uh, I drink a lot of water. But a lot of, a lot of watermelon juice, that's my new thing. Like 2024, I'm going to continue on this. And I'm going to be doing, if, you're, if you know about my Green Box Detox on my Cosmic Sugar website, it's something I do complimentary to help people. It's a program. It's usually about three weeks, 22 days. I, I didn't eat, I had a business called 22days.com and of course 22 is the total amount of letters in the hebrew alphabet tied to the sun I, I, and i was born on a sunday it's insane but anyway i don't want to get off on a different aspect but i have the green box detox and the green box detox is going to be about i am implementing a lot of watermelon juice and so i may have to wait a little bit to do that because not everybody has access to watermelons right now um but one of the reasons why i came to columbia is because they have watermelon year round. And it's a pretty amazing place, actually. So, but uh, normally, um, that's what I normally, that's what I do. I do a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of watermelon juice. I do some yogurt. I do bananas, protein shakes. I do whey protein. Um, but it just depends on, as, as far as if I have any uh, animal-based proteins. Um, you know, I drink eggs, I don't eat them. I don't like the taste of eggs. I think it's probably the perfect food, though. Um, and then I'm just like really basic, basic, basic eater. Uh, Jason's asking about Jordan Peterson. I haven't really paid attention to Jordan Peterson very much. So I couldn't give you an answer. Yeah, I mean, so Runaway Train says omnivore is, is how humanity has consumed food uh, since forever. I, I think maybe, you know, a thousand years ago, 5,000 years ago, maybe we were uh, a different species back then as far as habitual things and what we were consuming. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be really honest with this audience right now. Because I, I try to be as transparent as I can. I'm going to be super honest with you. After studying nature, like really studying it, and I, I want to digress and tell all of you, I have a high degree of ethics and morals. I'm not a fan of suffering. I'm not a fan of cruelty. I'm not. After studying nature, I realize everything gets eaten in this reality. Everything is created for something. That is not my opinion. That is a one plus one equals two fact. If you study the cow, just, just study, go study the cow. You go look at the cow and study it and what it's designed. You start like, what is it? What was it made for? And you're honest with yourself. You're going you're gonna to see that it was, it was designed to be eaten. I'm not saying that now because I switched back to omnivore and I'm trying to justify me because it makes me feel better. I don't give a shit. I don't care what people think. I don't care if people judge me. I, I, I posted this funny meme and I said, if God wants to test a vegan, 
He'll put them in a room full of carnivores. And you can flip that. If God wants to test a carnivore, he'll put them in a room full of vegans. But ladies and gentlemen, when you study nature, you realize it's predator prey here. It's an ugly world. And there are certain things you cannot get from plants, especially at this stage of the game with the depletion of the soil and you know the end game. But going back to what I was saying about maybe a thousand years ago, Maybe we were a certain way and species and all that stuff. Maybe we were frugivores. But you know, when I, when I switched back to omnivore, I remember the day I, I, I first had animal protein again. I, w I was literally, I can't even tell you how bad I was craving it. Like it was like, it was this, like, I, I can't even describe it. And it was my body telling me I needed it. You get your blood work done, my blood work. I mean, I, I, I could sh show you my blood work. I, I'm, not, I think I'm not just making this up because, oh, well, the devil inside of you was wanting you to eat meat and you're not supposed to eat meat. And No, I did my blood panel. Done my blood panel. I got anemia when I went plant-based. That not, that's not to say that I got anemia because I went plant-based. It was inevitable because I'm, I'm living out a predestined script. But anyway, when I went back to that, when I, when, I, when I was craving it, and the desire that I had, and then when I had it, it was this ex, like explosion, this game changer. This, I can't even describe the energy. And then it's like, now I look at my life right now as authentic as I can be with all of you. And if I go to a restaurant right now, if I were to go to a restaurant with any of you, we just order a whole shitload of food. Like if you compare some, some, some grilled teriyaki salmon and I compare that to some steamed broccoli, for me, 1,000% out of the 1,000 times, the salmon is going to be something that tastes better than the broccoli. The hamburger with mustard and ketchup and pickle and lechuga, lettuce, I like I used to eat it. The very top best hamburgers. Why do they taste so good? Why do these things taste so good? All the things that taste like shit are the things that are good for you. The roots, the herbs. But yet you flip that, the things that are the best tasting are the worst for you. But again, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, it's like I've tested this with myself. And I'm, I'm not trying to be a showboat. I'm not trying to be a spokesperson for the carnivore or... Like there's, like you could put people and they're gonna they're gonna spit out data. Oh well, you can't get this from that. You can't get. Oh, you can survive on this, so you you gotta do it this way. And then you'll have this person and they'll spit out data for here and say. There's gonna be truth in both data sets. But I tell you, I researched it when I went back. I researched it. I I, I went through countless videos of people that were the same as me. They they went straight vegan and their health deteriorated. Now, are they trying to screw you over? Are they trying to make you a liar? If you're like a huge, like, a, like I, I, I know the vegan culture. One of my family members, one of my families, like, like someone that I deeply care for, family, is a vegan advocate. And guess what, I look in her, I look in her chart, her astrological chart, and there it is. It's in her astrological chart. Undeniably in the astrological chart. But that's for a different story. But what I'm saying is, folks, 
someone, if someone's going to cram down your throat that it's got to be this way, and they're belligerent, and they're just an asshole about it, and they're just crazy belligerent, it's, what kind of energy is that, man? What are you, what are you a proponent of? Thinking it's got to be your way, like you're the godsend, like you got it all figured out. But your life's broken. And you're ugly and your heart is so heavy. Folks, my, my suggestion to you as a fan of life, I'm a fan of life, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of animals too. Like for many years when I was vegan, and you know, you can ask, when I was in Puerto Morelos and I was hanging out with Santos and Danny and I, like Dan, Danny was still consuming meat and he was, he owned it. And Danny is a, like, he's, he's a brother to me. He's a great guy. And he would eat, we went on, we went doing the secretism society. He, he would tell people, you're like, like Logan's, Logan's not eating animals because of his ethics and morals. That was, that was one of the main reasons why. And then when I started to get more sick and more sick, and I couldn't get my health right and couldn't get my health right and nothing was working and nothing was working. I'm like, man, what the hell is going on here? So if somebody's going to sit here and tell me who is leading their own life in a certain way, mainly they're vegan, and they're going to tell me, oh, no, vegan's the only way. Those are the people I don't follow. Those are the people I'm like, dude, you're on, like, everybody's on their own journey. But if you're, if you're going to be, if you're going to be in that box, when you haven't studied, clearly studied everything, like you're going to study everybody's lives and look at all their blood panels and see how they are health-wise. If you're going to be on that kick, no. And I'm not saying this is going to be permanent for me, but I'm just saying it's like, you know, like your health is your wealth. And if you want to bring theology into this, okay. I'll bring it right. I'll bring it, and we'll we'll go into the Old Testament, and that's why in Judaism they have kosher foods, because in the Old Testament it tells you how to kill an animal, humanely. That's kosher. So that's kind of where I'm at in my life, you know. And I again I, I look at the simple things like, what am I craving? Is not my body telling me something when I'm craving something? Even when you, like, like it's very well known, if you crave sugar, you may be deficient in salt. You may be deficient in salt if you crave sugar. So you may want to look into that if that's something that you have. Like if you have like a sugar addiction, so to speak, maybe you're deficient in salt. Sodium chloride is one of the main components for stomach acid. To create stomach acid. You need sodium chloride. So if you have trouble, like if you gotta take betaine, if you're gonna take hydrochloric acid to digest your food, well, your stomach acid may not work right. I, sp I say this because I speak from experience. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying this because I'm authentic here. I'm, I'm striving to be authentic. If you want to judge me based upon what I just said, that's on you. But no one gets to judge me. I don't get to judge you. And you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of life. I'm a fan of even even the animals. Like people say, how can you do that? Well, are you, are you completely innocent and free? Like, are you doing everything perfectly? There's probably some blemishes in your life. So until you fix your blemishes, how can you go and start to say, well, you're not right for doing this and you're wrong for doing that. I, I, like, where do you draw the line? 
There's going to be justification for everybody here in this comment section. It, when you start to develop unconditional love, you will stop judging people for what they're doing. That's unconditional love, is when you stop judging. When you judge, you're now conditional. Which I don't even think anybody can be unconditional on. There's going to be conditions to your love. It's just how heavy is it? So, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm telling you all this, like, like I'm coming into 2024 with the desire to be as honest as, and transparent as I can with my audience. I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers. But I ain't going to judge you. If I don't resonate with your behavior, if I don't resonate with your way of life, you ain't going to see me hanging. I don't really hang out with people. I'm a hermit. My, my, my code, my Rahu is in Sagittarius. My, my code is the path of the hermit. A lot of time alone. Celibacy for long periods of time. Which is primarily what I do these days. Years and years of celibacy. Then years and years of celibacy. That's what feels right to me. When you know your code. Your code is designed specifically for you. So I'm coming into 2024 with a light heart. Not knowing anything. Surrendering. But certainly not judging. Not trying to justify. And I hope all of you can do the same. I hope all of you can be in that same mindset as well. If someone doesn't follow your way of life, don't be sitting there throwing stones and judging. Because that's, as human beings, we typically are pro, I think we're in the habit of judging. And I, I, don't, I don't think that's the right way. All right. I just, you know, I, I really hope also, to, uh, I see some of the comments. Thanks, everybody, for the comments. I appreciate each and every one of you being here. Just, I, I really wish that society will use more critical thinking going into 2024 and realizing what goes into what it means to be a human being. Because, uh, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what your position is and stance is on what you consume, what you use, what you buy, Not only are you being used by the voice in your head, but you're a killing machine, all of you. You can be vegan and you're still a killing machine. Why do I say that? Because when you walk outside, you're killing things. And you see, what you'll do, you'll justify that because, well, I don't know about it. So that will be your justification. So you see how justifying things always runs in our reality and habits? You will justify your pursuit in life. You're going to justify it. That's what, that's what we do as human beings. We justify. Well, here's the stats. Or let me tell you why it's this. Or let me tell you why I do that. You'll justify everything, all your actions. You will justify it because the fi my final answer, and this is, not, I, this is me regurgitating the work of Werner Erhard and Landmark because I'm a huge fan. Life's about looking good. That's it. Your whole life revolves around looking good. That's why you try to be right in everything you do. Because you don't want to look bad. Because when you're wrong, you look bad. People don't want to admit their mistakes. Because you look bad. So I hope moving into 2024, you'll do less judging, more observing. 
follow your path because see you don't win the game if there is such a thing by proving everybody else wrong like walking around like oh i told you so see i had it right like i saw somebody in the comment section here and it was poke 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 i saw the poking i wasn't going to entertain it why i'm not going to entertain the pokes I'm doing me. And I'm not a guru, folks. I'm a tour guide. You know, thank you, Tiffany. I'm a tour guide. Yes, I, 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 I marched. I own that space of being a tour guide. Yes. I'm here to show you what I found, what my discoveries are. I'm not going to tell you which way to go. As I say, when I do my readings for people, I'm going to show you your amusement park, but I'm not going to tell you what rides to get on. Not my, I'm not going to tell you what line to go stand in. So you, you want to go on the, you should, you should get on the roller coaster. I'm not going to tell you to do that. Because there is not one path that's the only tried and true path. There's just your path. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the, the whole, like, that's the funniest, that's the comedy in life, right? Who the hell, like, oh, let's create something on social media where you can poke somebody. Like, that's so, I don't know, that's ridiculously funny. All right, so I've just been shuffling these cards a million times over. Let's, let's do a couple cards, and then I'm going to end this session. And I'm going uh, to go eat. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth, do I do readings? Yeah, of course. Uh, you can email me or just go to cosmicsugar.org. Maybe Stephen or is, is just Stephen here tonight? Or is Pamela here? Oh, pizza, man. Yeah, pizza. I, here in Colombia, they don't, I, I haven't really eaten out. Um, the food is. Okay, I guess. But it's a great country, though. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for your comments. I really appreciate you. Let's pull a couple cards. And we're just going to do the normal routine. We got 20, like, let's talk about 2024. This was, like, more about what's your question. Um, I wanted to create a really amazing vibe. You see the, the room. These are the rooms that I create to create the vibe. Being on television to show you it's a fractal down. I'm on your television set, your, your little black mirror. You know, this is the reason why I create these rooms. It's my artistic graphic design. I like to be an artist, so this is kind of my expression of that. But it's to show you it's a fractal down. You're looking into the screen. It's, an, it's, a, fract, it's a soul below from your as above. You become the as above. You're the star of the movie. I'm the, I'm the, co, I'm the, uh, the extra. Moving into 2024, what are you going to do differently in a major way what you weren't doing in 2023 or what you were doing and now you're going to stop and, and change it into 2024? How can you raise your frequency in 2024 to become a better human being, ethically, morally, paying it forward, helping people? So let's ask it like, 
what's coming for 2024. <clears throat> for many months, it was DNA activation upgrades. And boy, did they come in. I, <clears throat> they did for me massively in 2023. And I know that they came in for a lot of you because I got a lot of feedback from people, a lot, a lot of feedback. So let's talk about 2024. What is the tarot cards going to say for this time moving forward as we gently move into the winter solstice, um, the sun at its lowest point in the Tropic of Cancer, the highest point in the Tropic of Capricorn. It's always going to be the yin-yang, right? But what does the cards have to say as a collective? Maybe this will be personally for you. Sometimes that happens where the reading is somebody, they yell, people will email me like, oh my God, those cards were meant for me. But let's see. The la I think the last time I did this, we did the cards of illumination and we, I added them up and it was 126 and 126 is tied to the I am. All right. So we have a lot of DNA activation upgrades, but what's coming in for 2024 beyond what I said in the very beginning of this presentation of the Nine of Swords, the Queen of Hearts, the King of Hearts, uh, stress, anxiety, worry, you know, like the reset coming in. What is that going to look like? But what's coming forward for all of us as a collective, maybe for you personally? Card number one is the Seven of Wands. This is going to be card number 20. Eight. Card number 28. Or 29, excuse me. Card number, two, is this way? Hold on. 29. 29, excuse me. It's tied to the sun, right? Wow, okay. So we have, a, we, we have a card tied to the number 29 and the sun. Okay. Card number 29, the seven of clubs, the seven of, uh, the seven of wands. Now this card, when you look at it, the energy is, see, it's defending what matters. But as somebody now, as an observer, I don't, I don't need to defend. Neither do you. You don't need to defend your way of life. You just need to go live it. And if somebody pokes you, not, get away. Seven of Wands, card number one at the bottom of the deck whoa okay uh second card seven of wands card number 29 that's tied to the sun ribonucleic acid card number 54 tied to phosphorus another card tied to the sun this is of course a card of contemplation meditation visualization this is card tied to xenon, the voice in your head. It's also tied to phosphorus because phosphorus equals 54 in numerology. And this is card number 54. It's tied to Lucifer, the four swords. We now, we, we, it's really interesting. We're starting this off with a bang because we literally have the seven and the four there. That's 74. 74 is tied to the G-O-D. 74 is tied to tungsten and tied to light bulbs and tied to the sun. So we have sun reference here. Wow. Sun reference here right away, right off the bat. Okay, let's get a third card. And now we have the Page of Cups. Card number 47. This is, th this is uh, tied to the Tetragrammaton. This is also tied to the prison, but in tarot, I don't want to get too off track. That little fish in the cup is, you know, this is the prince or princess. And the Page of Cups is you know, looking for something. And it's got something in its cup. So let's expand upon that because I have no idea what that means. It's like a big wrench in the cards here. Seven of Wands, Four of Swords, Page of Cups. Let's get a fourth card here. What is that Page of Cups? Extend upon that. Well, now we get the Fool. Now we get the Fool card here. So we have some innocence, we have some trust. The fool, innocence, trust. More sun reference though, because the zero is the hidden 22. 22 is tied to the sun. Anytime you see the number 22 or 23, sun. 22 master builder, sun. 79 is the 22nd prime number, 79 is gold, sun. The fool's tied to the sun. You see the sun behind that fool's head? 
This is, this is the hidden 22. 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Sun. Torah, 19, sun. Sun, 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 sun. Trust innocence. Let's see what this means. I'm going to do five cards because five books of the Torah. Five is the sun. We've got prison planet five. Fifth house of astrology is Leo, ruled by the sun. Crossed away is Aquarius, ruled by Uranus. We're moving into the age of Aquarius. or already have moved into the age of Aquarius. Last card, five. So we got two pages here, right? Card number 26. I'm sorry, card number 33. What am I saying? Card number 33. 33 being tied to the Christ, being tied to arsenic, being tied to poison, being tied to Lucifer, being tied to the physical body. The Page of Wands wants to go on an adventure. So it's interesting. We have two pages in this collective, but we have two cards of journey. We have the Fool, Trust, and Innocence, and then we have the Page of Wands, which is card 33, which is tied to the words free will. Because, see, free will is 33 in numerology. And this is the card of the adventurer. So is this saying to stand by, stand by your dreams, focus on your dreams. Don't need to, to forget about the word defend because that seven of wands is normally defending what matters. No. Stand by your dreams. Stand by your visual eye. What do you see? Because the wands, it means the, the mental. They are tied to the sun. The wands are tied right to the sun in the tarot. The wands is the first suit. So we have sun, and then we have maybe the sun going out. <laughs> there is that possibility. The seven of wands, maybe being the sun, the sun going out. And then that being followed up by the Page of Cups, which is typically a card of like, you know, something brand new coming. And that brand new that's coming in, that's what the fish in the cup is. That's something brand new. It, it ends with this reading with uh, trust and innocence and adventures and free will. Are, folks... Is it possible that we haven't had any free will? Now, it, how does free will work in a predestined script? If you're like, I'm going to say hypothetically, right? Because I can support that we live in a predestined script. I've done it countless times. But I can't make you believe that. But let's just all here hypothetically say predestination is 1,000% absolute. Meaning you have no choice. Is that going to get alleviated? Are we going to have the ability to move into this uh, full energy combined with the free will of the Page of Swords? Are we actually going to get that back? You know, ladies and gentlemen, when you correlate this to theology and you really think about this, it says from the, from, from the, the, the devil... Your adversary, the lion, which is tied to the sun. I know, I know. It doesn't make any sense to some of you. But if you read it, and I'm going to show this in my upcoming uh, presentation. That the sun's the devil. But I have sun devil. Go watch my sun devil. But is the sun projecting onto your, the voice in your head? And if the sun goes out, as it says in Revelation, and the, the, the devil's put into the abyss, that means that, the, that means that you will end up becoming this. You will have the ability to trust, be free, be innocent, and go on a journey of free will. You will be able to utilize this energy here. That's kind of what this is possibly interpreting here. Then you get into the movie Free Guy, and Free Guy was like, hey, what do you want to do now? Whatever we want. Because the blinders got removed. And is the sun going to go out? Is the sun the devil? I, I say it is. It's the life giver, absolutely. But it'll burn your ass. It'll take from you.
So is this alluding to the fact that that thing is going to go out? Maybe a new one comes in. That's already in the sky. Some people have tons of videos. And now the, the voice in your head is changed to where the veil has been lifted. And you can see everything with clarity. You're like, oh, now I see. Oh, now, oh, now I really see. See, we're starting to see this as a collective. We're starting to, the veil is being lifted. We're starting to see now how things really work. And that's very freeing. So it's very possible that this right here, these two cards mean that the sun is going to sleep. It's going out. And what you're going to be left with maybe is a new one. And then you're going to be able to trust and have innocence again and go on an adventure of free will. And maybe free will will be restored. Because I, do, I like, do I believe we have free will? Paquito, which means very small in Spanish. Paquito. Very little. What would it mean if you had 100% free will? Now, again, I'm not saying this is true. I'm saying that this is hypothetical. Let me add these cards up and we'll, we'll end this transmission. So I got 185, if I count the fool as 22, 185, which is tied to the number 70, uh, 74 and 75. And 75 is tied to Lucifer, 74 is tied to Tungsten and the Christ and Lucifer. It's also tied to the speed of light. 185 is 186,000 miles per second speed of light. This is 185, very close. And if I remove the 22, we then get the number 163, which is a permutation of 316, which is Revelation 316, which talks about being lukewarm. 163 is tied to the number 66. Because the 66th element called dysprosium has an atomic weight of 163. 66 is tied to the sun. Because it's tied to Jesus. So this is perhaps indicating, folks, that sun's going out. And that's the devil. And when it goes out, you're going to have a fresh set of everything. A fresh set of everything. Well, that's kind of what I got from this. That's kind of what I interpreted from these cards. I mean, two pages back to back, that's a lot of freedom. That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of adventures. Page of Cups usually is, you know, the Cups is hearts, love. The Page of Wands is, is strategizing and mental things, but it's the card of free will. And then you get the Fool in the back end of that, which is all about trusting the journey and innocence and a new start and a new beginning. This is beginning to look like something pretty magical. So that's what I got for you, folks. Let's talk about 2024. Tied to the 163, it's just so fascinating that that 163, the, the number, and it's all, there's a lot of sun, my, all my research is all about the sun now, ladies and gentlemen. I got one right on my hand. I was born on a Sunday. The guy who tattooed this on the back of my hand, the guy's name, the guy, I, I got this, I, I told this story, I'll tell, some of you may be new here. I got this in San Miguel de Allende, the first place I moved to in Mexico. It's about three hours north of Mexico City. Moved there, sight unseen. I had a friend that lived there, right? So right before I left there to come to Puerto Morelos, I wanted to get a tattoo and I wanted to get this on my hand to remind me that life's a joke. So I booked an appointment. I couldn't get an appointment for another week. It took me a week to get the appointment. The day of the, uh, the day I got this was a six of clubs day. The 19th card in the deck, the sun. And the guy who tattooed me his name was Leo. 
Leonardo, but he went by Leo. No kidding. I got the videos and everything to, to show that. Scripted reality, folks. Scripted reality. All right. Well, that's what I got for you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about 2024. I hope you got something out of this. Thanks for your comments, your questions, the love, support. 2023 is almost in the bag. I will be decoding for New Year's Eve. It'll be just another day for me. Just another day. Let's get one last card for all of you. We're going to do the cards of illumination just for the cherry on top. Steven, thank you. That's right. 163, 38th prime number. 38 is tied to I am. 38 is also tied to Neptune. <laughs> Thanks for that reminder, Steven. 163 being the 38th prime number. Live chat New Year's Eve. No, I'm not going to do anything for New Year's Eve. I thought about doing this for New Year's Eve, but nah, I, I just felt like coming on Saturn Day, you know. Um, I may end up doing something for some of my Patreons. So if you're a Patreon member, I may do something via Zoom for all of you on Patreon. Something very special. You'll be able to do a meet and greet with me. Talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, through the Zoom. So I, pro I probably will do that tomorrow. That's probably what I will do. Okay, so one last... Uh, one last card from the, the amazing Cards of Illumination. 52, card 52 cards in a deck. One card. To finalize this, let's talk about 2024. And the card is <laughs> the Nine of Clubs. Wow, what a card. Card 22. 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. 22 letters. 22 is the master builder. 79 is the 22nd prime number. This is the wounded warrior. Folks, this is the something's happening with the sun, folks. If you got this card as your birth card, you are one smart person. This is the wounded warrior. The nine is the sine wave. All the nines represent the sine wave. The nine on the chessboard is the bishop. Nine of clubs, nine of hearts, nine of diamonds, nine of spades. The wounded warrior as the final message. Woo! It's going to convert into card number 31. We're at absolute is 31. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this where I started with this amazing cover song by Stephen Wilson Jr. And this song called Santa Monica by Everclear. And at the end, you know, at the, the ending, he says, watch the world die. This is an amazing rendition. I will leave this video description in the comment section of the video in a little bit but ladies and gentlemen chit chat amongst yourselves appreciate each and every one of you sending you tons of love from Colombia, and we'll catch you next time ladies and gentlemen until next time we will see you later dreaming of the west coast i don't want to be old downtown i don't want to be old stupid game with my big black boots and my old suitcase I do believe I found myself a new place And I don't want to be the bad guy And I don't want to do your sleepwalk dance anymore I just want to see some palm trees And I will try and shake away this disease we can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind. Swim out past the breakers and 
watch the world die We can't live beside the ocean And leave the fire behind Swim out past the breakers And watch the world die And I am still dreaming of your face Hungry and hollow for all the things you took away And I don't want to be your good time And I don't want to be your fall back crutch anymore I walk right out into a brand new day And the scene and rising in my own weird way I don't want to be the bad guy dance anymore I just want to see some sunshine and I just want to find some place to be alone we can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind swim out past the breakers and watch the world die we can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind Swim out past the breakers and watch the world die. Beside the ocean and leave the fire behind. Swim out past the breakers and watch the world die. We can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind. Swim out past the breakers and watch the world die. We can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind. Swim out past the breakers. Watch the world die. We can live beside the ocean and leave the fire behind. So now past the break and watch the world. Watch the world. Yeah, I want to work.